What's up, everyone? ODC here, and I am with Jose, and he is the owner of Big Boy Collectibles. What's up? What's up? What's going on, everybody? <laughs> and um, uh, Strident was supposed to join us, but I guess he couldn't do it tonight. Um, so it is just me and Jose, and we are going to shoot the shit. And uh, I'm going to give you guys a chance to get to know Jose. He's a good guy. And um, yeah, so what I wanted to discuss... <laughs> <laughs> was uh, actually you know what before we get to that because that's just a funny topic um why don't why don't i give you you the uh the reins for a while and uh explain everyone uh who you are and why you love this crazy thing that we call gi joe <laughs> oh <laughs> did i put you uh, on the spot <laughs> you put me on the spot a little bit no okay. uh i've been in uh like always, Joe Collector, all the way back from, I wouldn't say I started back in 84, uh, on and off. Of course, you know, we grow up, you know, we get into it. So I went uh, from 84 to about 88, uh, then uh, moved on because it wasn't the cool thing to do. But I always had the passion for the Joes. And later in life, um, basically, uh, like always, I always had this thing there for it. I was always picked up some toys here and there, nothing big. Um, until one day, believe it or not, in 2006, I was with my wife and we were in Target and uh, she was doing her thing and I was doing my thing and I just, just couldn't do it, with, be with her anymore. So I decided to go to the toy aisle and unto behold, they are G.I. Joe 2006 re-release 25th anniversary cards hanging right there. And I just had that, you know, the lights, the shot when the sky come down and just lit up and everything just came flooding back to me grab the first card it's cobra commander grab the second card is destro the third card it's storm shadow the fourth card is duke and i just went ape crazy after that yeah. and then i been collecting everything from 2006 to just last joke on uh that's how we started there um Big Boy Collectibles, just to let you, let you know, uh, we, I started Big Boy Collectibles in 2015, uh, late 2015. It was something that I always wanted to do. It was what my passion. Um, I've been in sales all my life, but I've never been in, in it, something that I wanted to do. So I had launched a different type of business and it failed. Unfortunately, it, it went bad. It went bad on me. Uh, and then it took, you know, my, my wife, I give credit to my wife. Uh, she told me, give, give something else a shot. What is it that you love to do? And I told the GI Joes, she, she told me, why not go out, you know, do something there. Why don't you just, you know, see what you can do with it? So I started out selling my extras. Mm -hmm. That's how it all started, believe it or not. It was mm -hmm. all my extras. The stuff that I just, you know, you got it in the bins. I have my cabinet and it's great and I love them. But it's that extra stuff that, hey, and with everything coming out, I said, you know what? Let me give it a shot. And it just, thanks God, knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> it's been great so far. And I've been loving it. Uh, you know, we're going on our second year this year. Um, the community has has blessed, blessed us with, uh, you know, success so far. I want to call it success. Uh, we're doing good. That's good, and, and uh, you know, I, I I try to show my support as much as possible with my as well, um, and uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, especially because what was it? I what was it? I I found you. What was it? Late? No, mid last year, and I was like, wait. What is this? And then I told um, I told Strident and all all the other guys, a uh, uh, dumbass reviewer, and I told uh, Chapman Films and a whole bunch of my my fellow YouTubers uh, about you, and they're like, "Where where was this place?" And I'm like, "Well, he hasn't been around that long, but I mean, he's been around for two years, so and he's still he's still going, which is great. I mean, it's and it's not it's not it's got to be tough." You know, when you first started out, and I'm I'm not going to sit here and speak for you because I mean you know better than I do, but I'm just assuming that it had to have been tough that that first that at least first year and a half because I mean you were really only providing GI Joe, which is kind of a niche market. Um, 
for uh, you know for what you're selling but um, you've branched out now and you you're giving people more choices more variety and stuff like that and that's also something I wanted to bring up just so you guys know that um, it's not only he doesn't uh, Jose doesn't only sell uh, GI Joe's here he also sells Marvel Legends uh, Marvel Select um, um, a plethora of of different DC collectibles um, he's selling Vitruvian hacks. Um, I mean, you could definitely go check out his website while you're checking this out. Cause I actually linked this linked his, um, website in here. So you guys can check that out as well. But, um, it had to have been tough. Was it tough that first year was the first year tough? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it, it was, uh, think about it. Uh, you had your, uh, staples already established, you know, you had your other guys. Uh, so I come in and I'm just another guy who's just trying to, you know, pedal his to you know, his Joes. Uh, but I, I believe it or not, the Joe community is an awesome community. Um, I yes. came in and I had a couple of people give me a shot and uh, people like yourself, uh, people like Strider that gave us a shot. You know, we came in and they, you know, bless us with opportunity to, you know, just let us show you what we can do, you know, the equality that we can give. Um, and it's been so far, like I said, it's been good so far for us. Um, yes, we have. Uh, G.I. Joe has come to the point where I felt that I am seeing where I want to take Big Boy Collectibles. Uh, Big Boy Collectibles is not just going to be a G I started out with G.I. Joe. We, we modeled the logo over on it because of it. Um, that's my true passion. That's going to be my number one. Yeah. It's always going to be. Um, but, you know, there's other, other figures. So I'm taking the, the company or I'm taking the image of Big Boy Collectibles to be, I want it to be where it is the, you know, my goal is to make it the number one spot for anybody looking for any type of action figures. You know, it's not gimmicky. We just want to stick with the action figure uh, genre. That's what we want to do. Uh, in the last, I would say, I want to say in the last year, within the last year, we were expanded. Like you, you mentioned, we were expanded to Marvel Legends. We went from that line. We went into DC uh, figures. We went from, we found Vitruvian hacks. Uh, we're always looking for new uh figures uh hopefully in the future we could do something with you know um uh mythical legions uh mm -hmm. we got conversations with them going uh and i'm also thinking of, of bringing on some other figure lines you know we are doing transformers we do star wars now mm -hmm. we do vintage uh and modern i got he-man we do vintage and modern we're planning on we just uh finalized uh, a deal with Super Seven. We're gonna bring on the, the next their wave of, of nice. Master figures. So we're hoping that's gonna work out. We we are we should have the next <laughs> if they ever come out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hit or miss. I mean, it's it's like everything is growing pains. You know, exactly. But yeah. I've seen their work, and I seen just like you know, uh, and I think it it fits us. It fits our mold. I want to keep it in that in that field, and that's yeah. where um, that we can go. Yeah, and, that, and that's good. And and the the good thing about your store is that you have the option of two things: vintage or modern, and you have the option of loose or mint on card. And that's a rare thing. Most um, online retailers they don't do that. Um, you look at a lot of other sites, and most of them don't offer that. They don't even offer loose. It's it's brand new, modern, and and that and that's pretty much it. Brand new, modern. That's it. Um, so I mean, you're giving people a lot more options to work with and especially with us GI Joe collectors because you I mean you're you're really good at restocking you're good at getting rare things as as well as common things too which is good for for you know your army builders stuff like that I just bought a, a, a bat a, co a couple bats from you and um, I've been getting I've been getting the itch to to get a few exclusives you're starting to mess with me now <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't. I, I prided myself in not 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 going down that road because it's a it's a dark road. road. <laughs> it's an expensive road. road. So, uh, but I, I did get a couple. Um, what was it? I think I got the uh, the undertow officer from. Mm -hmm. Yep, I got her, and um, uh, yeah, I got a, I got a couple other. Thank you for so much for helping me get this finally. This was a big deal for me because um, there was a, a whole thing that I did on the that uh, getting to know a GI Joe um, interview video I did, and a lot of things I explained in that video that a lot of things got destroyed in the flood a lot, like 
in the mid nineties, like 97, 98. And um, pretty much 90% of everything that I own, including my Ninja Turtles, all my old school X-Men, all my DC figures were destroyed in this flood. Just, wow. and, and, and my mother, it was, <laughs> and I don't like to put blame on anyone, but my mother didn't know what things were worth. And when the insurance adjuster came, long story short, he gave her, wrote her a check for said amount of what those figures were worth at the time, which was retail. And uh, that was pretty much it. And I never saw my, my action figures or my vehicles anymore. And, and, but this was one of the few that actually survived. Now, the reason why I bought a, a one from another one from Jose, and I'm dropping shit all over. But um, a, a reason why I bought one is because the one that I have is, is like, it's, it's seen better days. <laughs> <laughs> it's seen better days. It's got the, the the loose legs all over the place. The it needs a new O ring. Um, it, it's a it's a beat up mess. But it's one of the few th characters that I had that actually survived. So thank you so much for the uh, Hydro Viper. Nah, um, cool. See, that's yeah. why I do I love stories like that, dude. I love stories of you know somebody sees that figure and it just brings back it just clicks that image or a memory and I I I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's that's why we do what we do. You know what I mean? That's why we're collectors. Is it's to you know it's to pay it forward. It's to help out the next person, and, and uh, that's what I'm all about. I'm all about paying it forward. You know what I mean? I I've I, I've helped out a lot of collectors with a lot of things and not asked for anything in return because that's just how I I see. Um, not all the time. That's not how you need to handle things. But, you know, <laughs> those those nice occasions where you can and someone's, you know, damn it, I don't have the money for this, but it's here and it's a good price. And I'll be like, I got you. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, awesome. that's yeah, that's that's what that's what a, a real collecting community is about. There's this been convolution of what other people call communities, but they're they're not real communities as I see it. But that's a different story for a different time. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> uh, what I do want to get into, and um, there's a couple questions I'll ask you. Um, what, uh, and I, I won't go through all the questions because there's what, what, 18 questions on here. I'm not going to go put you through 18 questions, but um, wh what is your, what, what's your favorite GI Joe action figure? Tunnel rat. Tunnel rat? Vintage Tunnel and modern? What, or do you want to uh, do vintage and modern? We'll do vintage, vintage and modern. Is always, uh, vintage is dear to my heart. And I tell you why I relate with Tunnel Rat. Tunnel Rat is, is from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Okay. He is also only, if I'm not mistaken, five, to about five, two, five, three. Mm -hmm. I'm five, five. So I'm very. <laughs> Yeah. So when when you know in that relationship we were like uh, I'm like I remember when he came out in the movie and I'm like oh my god that that could be me that's you know I'm I'm him <laughs> he's my height he's from Brooklyn you know so that's my number one figure figure I've had one I I found one in ninety and it's been with me and it's never gonna leave my case. That's awesome. That's, so so vintage and modern though that's your that's your favorite. Yeah, okay. uh, vintage is number one. Vintage is number one. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a vintage guy, you know, I grew up mm -hmm. with the vintage, well, I don't mind the modern, you know, it gave yeah. it, it look better. I get it. I get it. Um, there's a lot of people that prefer vintage over modern. Um, what's your favorite GI Joe or Cobra vehicle? My favorite is the whale when it comes to the Joes. Okay. You can't be that, you can't be that killer whale. Yeah. Okay. What that's it, awesome. That's, <laughs> come on. Uh, I'm not a big, you know, a cutter fan, but. I, I can deal with the whale. <laughs> Cobra. Okay. Let me see. That's a hard one. Because, you know, the bad guys always have the good stuff. Oh, they do. I, oh, I and they do. Have the good stuff. Um, but if I were to pick one, holy crap. I would say the Hydro for you. Okay. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. It's that old school speedboat, yep. just to the nines. I mean, you couldn't put any more stuff on that thing. Exactly, and there's, there's. A, I love the the hidden features that it has too. So it can not only store, it can not only bring uh, some of the most deadly troops that Cobra has to offer. The Cobra eels, it can not only carry them. Um, it can. It also has hidden missiles. Um, it's got a lot of armament. It's got that huge turret on top. Oh on man, top. it's it's, fa what it's about a fantastic. Don't forget, it's got the depth charges in the back. You got two yep. compartments, 
two four depth charges. You got the yep. the uh, two cannons on each side. Yep. Uh, I'm, in my imagination, in my world, those are fifty cows pointing in yeah. you know directions. Absolutely. You got you got the cannon, you know, the can thirty cat millimeter cannon on the top. Then you yep. got the guy with with the uh, little you know uh, gun in the front of him, and then yep. you got the pipe. Awesome. You can't beat that vehicle. Exactly. And the two big torpedoes on the side. Those huge torpedoes. Ah. So awesome. It's it's just a it, it's a a a master master I can't say the word. <laughs> Mastery <laughs> of weaponry, I should say. Um but it, yeah, it's it's a fantastic book. So good pick. Good, definitely good pick. Um okay. Uh What's your earliest Oh, we already said that. I won't even go through that. <laughs> Uh, oh God! I don't even want to hit you with this one. How many Joes do you own? Oh, oh Lord! <laughs> I don't even want to. I don't even want to hit you with that one. <laughs> no, I mean, okay, if I have everything from 2006 to just about 2017, so I got everything modern. Um, I have. I want to say I have all of 86, 87, 88 vintage complete. I have about quarter of 82 and 83 done and now i'm starting to pick up everything from like uh 89 and above wow okay so <laughs> that's that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> like i said i'm i'm a true uh, people don't think of it you know people don't relate i don't know for some reason but i am and i tell whoever asks me i am a collector first uh so it's it's you know uh, I collect for me, and then big boy comes second. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, uh, you know what? And, and I, I was pondering this. What was it? About three years ago, starting up my finding some way, some capital to to start up my own shop because um, there's if you're from Buffalo, New York, there's there's like nothing here. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we got we got a population of under three hundred thousand. We're not a very big city, even though we're the second biggest city in New York State. It, it's it's not big here. We don't offer a lot. I have one major comic shop that doesn't even have many figures in it, to be honest with you, which is very unfortunate. Let alone any GI Joe figures. Um, so it, it, it's tough. It's few and far between. Uh, pretty much all of my shopping is on eBay or online, basically. It's it stinks. So I, I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, what? one day I'm going to do this, <laughs> and I was like, one day, one day, one day, and I'm I'm, I'm considering, you know, what, what the job I have, I I can't give up the job I have because it's just I love my job, it's too good, and uh, w but uh, I have this stuck in the back of my mind that uh, when I retire, that's what's going to happen. It's going okay. to happen. I'm saving my money already. I've been saving it. Um, we just bought a new house, and it's working out fantastic. Um, but, uh, one day I'm going to own my own toy shop. It's going to happen. Um, uh, so easy. sir, I envy you. I do. Ah, <laughs> uh, trust me. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. I mean, like I said, I started out with, uh, with my stuff and then we grew and, but the only, the only, if I were to give anybody advice, the only thing I would say is, um, uh, you ever meet those people that, you know, they have this image of. You just throw up a website, you know, you get a, a dot com and the millions start rolling in. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, it's not quite, <laughs> quite like that. Um, it, we still struggle. I don't struggle with the everyday headaches of like uh, a brick and mortar does. We mm -hmm. still have, you know, how do I get my name out there? How mm -hmm. do I come, you know, how do I find my way into, you know, a piece of that pie of, you know, with the big boys, you know, and we all know who they are. You know, you got the PBT assets in the world, your small mm -hmm. Joes, and it's just finding my way in there. The good thing is we we have a community that's very um, opening. You know, they're very passionate, so they will give a guy a shot, Yeah. you know. Well, you're and, a rarity because – and I'll, let me take a second. Strident just joined us, so what's up, buddy? <laughs> oh. What's up, Strident? How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good in yourself. I'm real good, man. Just finished up putting the kids to sleep. I was trying to put in some daddy time, you know. Oh, so. It's all good. Gotcha. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're you're a rarity, man. Like like when when I came across your site, I was like, wait, what the what? What is this? 
he has <laughs> he has loose vehicles. What what is? No, right. Have I entered the, uh, the the sixth realm? What's going on here? I'm like, this doesn't exist <laughs> because no other site has that. Let alone like a GI Joe website. I was like, what the? F I gotta tell everybody. I gotta tell everybody. You know. <laughs> so that's true. that's true. Yeah, it's it's few and far uh, between. You find sites like yours, so it's good. Thank you. I'm hoping you know that. You know, it just keeps growing for us. You know, I can't complain. You know, take it day by day. Yeah. Yep. Um. What's up? So what's up, Strident? How you doing, bud? I'm good. I'm good. good. You know, good. same old, same old. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm glad you're here. So now I wanna I wanna get this off my chest because, <laughs> and Go I'm ahead. glad you're both here so I can I can talk to you both about it. Uh -huh. um, so sorry, chat. You're gonna have to wait a second. I gotta look at something else. <laughs> um so i i get this comment and it's not that big of a deal like I, i'm not making a big deal out of it but i just want to i want to say i want to bring this up to prove a point about something okay and this is the the ongoing struggle that i have with a lot of people when it's when i when it's versus when it's the the thunder wing and the ghost striker versus the god the goddamn sky striker Okay. <laughs> All right. I want to make this a point now, and I'll bring up the, the subscriber's name. And there's, I have nothing against him. I'm not trying to put him on blast. I'm trying to make him look stupid. None of that. This is no, it's cool. I got you. Yeah, we're just, we're just, we're just talking. Um, his name's Cyber Frank 2010. Okay. And I don't want anyone going on there and 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 bringing him down. Don't do that because we're just having a, an adult conversation. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> a big kid conversation. Yeah, yeah, we were having an adult conversation. Yeah. Um, so he goes, uh, I think it's a mistake to include electronics on GI Joe vehicles. You can't you can't have un you can't have water missions with them and Hasbro took shortcuts on the landing gear. It's Wait, not as nice as missions? you think. Hold on, let me finish. It's, let me finish this. That round missile rack must be a joke. It doesn't look doesn't look GI Joe to me at all. More of a true heroes brand or Chap May. I I what? would have traded the stupid micro for a full haul on the flag any day. You do a good job showing your perspective on the plane, but underneath it's not as sharp. Vintage years plane vintage year planes look damn da look good from any angle even underneath the best thing i can say about this is they tried at least <laughs> wow so okay uh, first thing is if you there's a lot of <laughs> if you're Go gonna ahead. say that a, GI, a vintage gi joe something looks like chap may it's the other way we around can't even yeah we can't really have the conversation also if you're gonna try and what is he comparing the GI Joe thing to? Like, BBI makes these really super realistic um, elite forces vehicles. You know, I'm not talking about the ones that are in Target now. I'm talking about the ones from years back. They made a um, a Raptor that was like 100%. They've made Hueys. They've made uh, Blackhawks. And I mean, they're like $300, you know, vehicles. Mm -hmm. And if you want the real world thing, that's where you need to go. Because G.I. Joe is almost never 100% the real world thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a version of it. Mm -hmm. They tweak it so they can fit in a box so they don't have to pay insane, you know, cost for shipping and whatnot. And it usually fits kind of, sort of, you know what I mean? <laughs> the amount of people supposed to fit. So, yeah, no, the comparison, that's, that's a moot comparison. Like, why... And you know, people like the, the the stuff for different things. You know, like how could you never put electronics in a plane because of water missions? It has nothing. Yeah, that, and that's what I was trying to explain to him. I go, if I go, that's like the nitpick of all nitpicks. That's what I told yeah. him. I go, you shouldn't be diving your planes into water to begin with. <laughs> I, I mean, I get if you're trying to do like, oh, it's cra it crashed and or whatever. Yeah. 
but that like his that's like the 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 nucleus of his argument is because if it gets water on it, which I've actually had my Thunderwing in the rain before, uh huh, no problems. Everything sealed on it, nothing yeah. got destroyed, no problems. The lights, the sound still work. But he was also saying when he when I when I retorted um, with my message back, I he sent me another message saying that. Well, well, lights and sounds are only meant for shelf wear anyway. It's not, they're not meant for outdoors. You can't leave your plane outside. I go, well, you shouldn't be leaving any planes outside if you're, I, I mean. Maybe it's just really old school. You remember when we were kids? Yeah. That was something we could do is bring your Joes outside. What were you saying, yeah. Jose? I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, this is the same argument between vintage and modern. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got your uh, fans who want everything the old way. And then you got you guys who are okay with, you know, adding a little touches. I'm sorry. The Thunder Wing is awesome. Have it you is. seen that thing? Yeah, we got it. Both <laughs> of us. We got it. Dude, it is one of the best planes Hasbro has ever produced. Mm -hmm. it, not only is it, I mean, it, this, it, to me, I'm, if you're going to compare it, you, you really can't. I mean, the Sky Striker, yes. Aesthetically, very Tom Cruise, Top Gun. If you grew up with that, that's why you love it, right? Exactly. But as a toy? Yeah, if you're talking features, you, yeah. It, it doesn't do anything. Thunder, absolutely not. I mean, this the Thunder Wing had a binocular in the back of it that switched from missile view to bomb view. Yes. It had more sounds than any, and it weighed like a freaking, like five pounds. Yeah. <laughs> freaking awesome. I mean, there yep. was so many good features about that but it's, it's going back i mean you got your purists and then you got your guys a little bit open-minded um i'm a little bit open-minded i love my vintage joe because i grew up with them but i don't have yeah. a problem with vintage. it's like uh it, it, i have this argument with my other you know my other buddies the joe community you know where, where gi joe should be and where gi joe you know where uh what's holding gi joe back i mean yeah. you know yeah they're, I, they're relying I, I don't know how you guys feel i don't know how you guys feel personally uh, then G.I. Joe has always had an evolution, right? So we had the 60s G.I. Joe 12 inch. It went as, it went as far as it got, and we got into the 80s. They came out with yeah. three and three That's the next evolution. Yeah. What's in my in my opinion, we have to go six inch. Yeah, I think they're you going think to. So? I was evolution. saying this years ago. I think they're gonna have to. I don't think you they should. What? They shouldn't, but that's what they're doing. I completely they'll do. disagree. I mean they might do it, but I disagree because they're gonna but you know what it is? It, it's it's trying to get ahead. Your, your reason uh -huh. why, and I think my reason after you're done. Oh, uh, no, I mean, I see that with Star Wars, they're doing it, but Star Wars has a different kind of budget because not only are they doing six inch, but they still do the three and three quarter inch. With G.I. Right. Joe, it's like if you were to go six inch, that's all that they would do because they don't, right now, they're not doing three and three quarter inch. So it's almost like you're alienating your previous fan base 100% and then you're catering to the modern like Marvel Legends everything must be six inches that fan base and it almost feels like they're two different they're two different fan bases like I can't use my six inch Joes with my three and three quarter inch vehicles you know and play sets and all that and say goodbye to vehicles yeah you'll, you'll, you'll they'll be the one what one every two years like like Star Wars gets if that that's if G.I. <laughs> Joe even gets that budget, you know? So, yeah. I mean, if, you, if they're yeah, going to go six inch, they have to just do six inch figures and don't even think about getting any vehicles with them because it's just not going to happen. Yeah. The way I, uh, way I base my opinion on is the fact that, okay, we have the success of the six inch. Uh -huh. Look at the price. The last round of Joes that came out, they averaged about 10 to $12. Yeah. Right? Okay, we, it's getting to the point where they're becoming now, what am I buying $12 for? You understand? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cost-wise, you look at a six, a, a, a six inch, you say, that's worth 20 bucks. You know, I get more out of it. So in my exactly. opinion, as a company, I can see them saying, you know what, this will be the next evolution. The success of Black Series. Everybody, for the most part, thought Black Series was going to fail. Who's going to pay $21, $24? And now you're even getting $30 for a six-inch figure. But it's mm -hmm. there because people get more plastic out of it. 
right? They get more figure, they get more detail, they get more head scope, they get better weapons, they get more of that. And I personally think that bringing GI Joe to that size, more people are more willing to pay more for it. You think and so? I think so. I think, come on, dude, think about it, Strident. Would you not want to see a bazooka in a six inch? Kind of, but to- like, but, the I fact mean, that, you know, like, think about, you have Marauders, you got uh-huh. Boss Fight Studio, they're all holding down where G.I. Joe falls short. So you would think that if Hasbro's looking at this and they're seeing that these companies are kind of taking, even though they supplement, they're kind of taking, oh, there's people who are making remaking their classic Joes with Marauder figures and they're just foregoing G.I. Joe altogether, like Hasbro product. So wouldn't you think Hasbro as a company would be like, I want to get those people back to keep them going and get new people in by upping the ante. I understand the price thing you pointed out. That makes perfect sense. People do notice that they're getting less figure and then they're paying more price, you know? You're right, that's true. Now, as to your point, yes, but who's supporting those four inch figures still? What do you mean? It's us. Like the Joe ones? Who's supporting yeah, it's us. the yeah. it's us, right? That's it. There's nobody yeah. new really supporting that. No. The only people that are really supporting the four inch size is because it's us. It's the people that grew up in the eighties. It's the eighties kids. It's the early nineties. And by early nineties, we were most of them, most of them are gone already. So yeah. this generation, this new, you know, this is what I mean by the evolution. Same thing that happened when they went from twelve inch. You think when they went from 12 inch to 3 inch, it wasn't like people were like saying, oh my God, you're going to kill that line. <laughs> <laughs> I went from 12 inches to 4 inches. You That's true. Yeah. And then it happened to COVID because people, then you introduce a new line, you introduce a new generation to it. In my opinion, that's what I think it, it should go because it hasn't been done yet. And if we all know if it hasn't been done yet, you're the first to do it. I mean, you know, if you had Jonas, I think it would be phenomenal. I mean, don't I mean, get me wrong, but I still believe in a 4 inch. And I hope they keep it going, but I would see a four inch more where they may let someone else do it and continue. Just like, you know, uh, Black Major, you know, Red Laser, those guys. Where they can stay niche for the people that are there, there's a reason why uh, Boss Fight really can't do nothing. In well, this job. really, there's, there's no reason that they, we can't have both. We can have our cake and eat it too. This is Hasbro we're talking about. They, they make Marvel Legends in three and three quarter inch, and they make Marvel Legends in six inch. There's no reason why we can't have both if that's what the route that they're going to go. Now, if one line has to subsidize the, the, the smaller three and three quarter inch line, if the six inch line is making enough money where it can subsidize that other line and keep it going, um, I mean, I, mean I, I, don't, I don't see that as, as being unrealistic. You know what I mean? There's no reason why we can't have more right now when there's nothing. This is this is well, Hasbro's no, decision to not give us stuff. There's no interest because the interest is so low. Like remember what I was saying when uh, I was talking about working with Cobra uh, Hooded Cobra Commander Seven Eight Eight. We noticed that the Joe fan base is so much smaller than we thought it was. Yeah. Initially, true. I thought there was tons of us, but then you find out that it's this tiny little this group, you know what I mean? Of guys around our age and a little bit older and they kind of don't get into the other shit. You know what I mean? It's like they're very specific GI Joe and things that can fit with GI Joe. So I think that if they did do six inch figures, you're going to lose those guys, but you're going to gain the Marvel legends community. Yeah, you will pretty you much will. You'll get those guys. You no. Know? Yep. And course, if, it, it, again, in my opinion, because you got to uh, let's admit it. Let's, let's be your first. We are, for the most part, right now, and I just read an article where Hasbro has committed to saying they're going to try to revamp the line and they're going to support it, which is great. But as collectors, once we're done, we look for something else. We want something. Yeah, that's true. You know, so that's why I say bringing that next size, you know how many more people would just jump on that because it's something new, something refreshing. Uh, same thing what happened again, what happened with the Black Series. Uh, some people believe that Black Series is not a success to Hasbro. Black Series is a huge success. Oh, yeah. Hasbro. It's a huge moneymaker for them. I oh, mean, my God. They had three San Diego Comic-Con exclusives this year. 
Never mind <laughs> someone having three of no, them. And again, I, I think it, 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 it will. I think that will be, if I were to, that's, that's all my guess. And again, it's my opinion. I think the six inch will be the next evolution. And that's where we should, yeah. in my opinion, we should go there. Yeah. I think we're going to get a they lot more. Fig- they probably will, yeah. They probably will. I just personally don't want them to. <laughs> yeah. I think, Again, this I is mean, I'll, I'll definitely get them because I know the quality will be better. The, well, the, it has to. The be, amount of detail can, will be, will, will, I mean, it better be better. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm looking at a three and three quarter inch figure and it's not as good as the damn six inch figure, just, it's better than the six inch figure, excuse me, then then, well, then I'm going to be like, oh, I, I get to put I, this down. I just, I'm, I'm resistant only because. I hate the fact that everything, uh, you know, follows. I get that Marvel Legends are popular, but a lot of them, regardless of what people think of the characters, the figures themselves, the quality is all over the place. Mm-hmm. And people try to say, like, you know, they're the best. They're the best. They're the, no, they're not the best. They're the most popular because they have a very dedicated fan base. And I don't want to see that happen to the Joes. I mean, we got that when Retaliation came out where, you know, you had gummy plastic joints and, like, figures' hands couldn't hold their weapons and and the feet couldn't fit on the pegs. Like, I don't want to see six-inch figures where they kind of half-ass it, you know what I mean? Like, because I feel like that's what they would do, being that G.I. Joe is kind of a a, a dying line. You know what I mean? It's not evergreen like it used to be. It's kind of like, you know, almost on its way out, which is why they're going to revamp it again. And they keep saying that they want to support it after a movie comes out and you know that way they have something fresh in the public consciousness and then they can you know move on from there um but it just feels like it's the generic way to go you know like everything follows marvel legends like there's no other scales like marvel select figures they're superior paint superior sculpts they just don't have the same articulation but because they're seven inches they get no love because everybody's collection when it comes to six inch revolves around Marvel Legends. When the icons came out, it was the same deal. They're smaller than six inch. So people dissed the shit out of them because they wanted them to, <laughs> to match their Marvel Legends. And I'm like, it's a number one, it's DC. Number two, it, they're trying to do something different. They're introducing a new scale. I'm not saying I'm 100% behind the, the icons. I felt like there were things that they took out articulation wise that at, yeah. at this point, why would you change certain things? You know, no thigh swivel. Yeah, that really bothered me. You know, no yeah. ankle swivel. And, and that's also, I think, the when the community stops supporting it is when companies start to um, cut corners. Yeah. You know what I mean? They stop putting the love in it. But when, if, if it's really successful and it keeps going and it keeps making money, remember, they, it's a business to them. You know, yeah, it, as long as the cash flow is coming in and, and they see the cash is coming in, They'll keep it up, but the moment you they see even just a little bit of a decline, they start cutting yeah. corners. Yeah. And that's when it's over. Yeah, down. you know. Um, yeah, you're right. You could debate this forever, and then you could, oh, then you're gonna have this, the next question. Okay, so we go to six inch. So what do we do? Do we mimic? Do we have the vintage? Do we bring vintage to six inch, or do we go with more modern style? I would go with modern. Well, they'll probably do both. They'll probably do both. They'll probably start out with the most like recognizable incarnation of each character, just like they did with Star Wars. They'll just be different that. looks. They do different looks of the characters. I mean... I mean, that, that the makes best. the most sense. It's the best of both yeah. worlds, yeah. Yeah. I, I just think... Thing, huh? I think... I, I'm a big fan. Look, I, you got your... Like I said earlier, Strident, we have your vintage lovers, and then mm-hmm. they hate modern, and you got your modern guys. Who, you know, they're not into the old ring style. Yeah. You know? uh, I'm a big believer in... You've got to... You have to, in essence, everything has to evolve, right? So these characters, as much as we want to see the old school bar, uh, bazooka, for instance, he has to be different in the next generation. The next generation yeah. is not going to recognize, uh, no offense, a goofy a goofy guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. With a Patriots jersey on. Damn those Patriots. <laughs> Damn who them around, hell. Who walks around with a bazooka? Seriously. Yeah. No offense. <laughs> It's like, you know, Mind Bender, he's got to put on a shirt. Eventually, yeah. Mind Bender has to put on a shirt. I agree. I've been yeah. saying that for a long time. <laughs> like, In my collection, he's wearing the uh, the Destro suit from Rise of Cobra. You know, that <laughs> that's, oh my that's, that's my Mind Bender. <laughs> my Mind Bender is the doctor from Rise of Cobra. 
I just was like, screw it. Oh, okay, that that's perfect. Yeah. Got the monocle. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I I point that stuff out all the time, and people like to my vintage fan, friends, you know, they they kind of diss the modern stuff as if there's no merit. And I'm like, nah, it's an evolution, like you said. And I started out with my O-ring. Yeah, yeah, I started out with the O-ring. Most of us did, you know? And now it's vintage. It's, I mean, uh, uh, modern. We have to grow up. You know, the equipment changes. Uh, if we're going to base it on, on I mean, yep. uh, come on. Seriously, you know, yeah. Scarlet with, with, with that weapon, that, you know, crossbow. By now, she should she would have one that's got a laser scope, you know, GPS guided, you know, everything. It's just like change. in Rise of Cobra, like in Rise of Cobra, <laughs> exactly. And you know, hated that, but that's yeah. you can't really have the old school. Um, if they it, do go six inch, it, it'll be after their movie comes out. Of course, I, I could definitely see that happening because it would be a, a revamping. Um, you would also have to come out with the movie figures too. Yeah. Um, you know, as as your first wave, it would probably be mostly movie figures to grab that movie audience. Because I mean, Marvel Legends they sell movie figures. Star Wars is basically all movie figures for the most part. Yeah. Um, a lot and we of movie figures sell. They do. They really do. Yes, yeah, they do. We all know. Anybody who's been in this long enough knows Hasbro's um, the way they do it. They they follow it either with a movie, then the cartoon comes out, then the toys. Mm -hmm. That drives sales. The movie drives the cartoon. The cartoon keeps it going, keeps it in the minds, keeps it in the thing. Uh, I don't know why people... I, I love Resolute. I thought yeah. Resolute was where we yeah. had to... Resolute... Per, if, yeah. I could, if, I could, if I could have anything, dude, if I could do... I would buy the G.I. Joe brand from Hasbro. Because they're so... <laughs> I feel that they don't they they don't know what to do with the line. They have no, no idea. They have no clue what to do with that line. It's like they they always copy the same thing. Transformers, they do the Star Wars thing. You know, movie carries a cartoon, cartoon carries a thing. But well, they I should think, be copying Transformers right now. They're not. That's the problem. I was just gonna say that. I was gonna bring up Transformers. As bad as those films are, they still shove them down your throat. Yeah. <laughs> They still shove them down your throat. They don't care. They don't care if they make a ton of money or no money. Yes, they, they're just going to keep making them. So why can't so you do that with G.I. Joe? I mean, just shove it down our throats. Because <laughs> at, least, at least I'd have product. I mean, there's nothing. You know what? I, had this, I had this conversation with a friend of mine. Uh, and it's very, in our opinion, is very simple. Because you can kill robots all day. Nobody yeah. say nothing. Right, yeah. you yep. robot all day. You could chop robot heads all day. Nobody mm -hmm. says, but you can you kill a really a terrorist organization in today's times? That's a no no now. Yeah. You can't do that. So that's I think where has we're stuck. Where how do we uh, keep those nanny mommies happy? And I don't. No offense. No offense. I don't want to offend any. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. no. Wanna, you know, I'm not offending anybody. You know, I'm just saying. I Cobra nowadays is a no-no. We can't have that anymore. Uh, somewhat. I think what it is is it's the approach. Because if their kids are playing Call of Duty and they're watching their characters get assassinated or, or executed okay. by you know enemies all day, where's the video game for G.I. Joe? If you're not going to do a movie, do a game. Follow the, the, the freaking uh, uh, the, the, the lore through the games and then make the figures follow the lore that's established through the games. You know what I mean? Make a movie that's not aimed at kids. Kids don't buy G.I. Joe's. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a fact now. We know that. It's, yeah. it's, old guys, it's older guys like us, <laughs> you know? And that, and, that, and that all has to do with them shooting themselves in the foot because they don't put anything out there. Oh, we got a one wave yeah. last, last year, and it was well, I just mean, a few I mean media -wise. I, I know, wise, but they, there's, like, there's nothing out there product-wise. There's nothing out there media-wise. There's nothing out there media-wise. There's nothing. So if there is yeah, nothing, no, you're not going to make any money off of it. Exactly. But so, I, I'm just saying, like, approach-wise, they can do a cartoon that's geared towards kids. You know how they tried to do a yeah, Renegade? No, yeah, like, you can't. Like, on the surface, it's still military, but it was aimed at kids, no. but it was trying to make us happy. Mm -hmm. It was. It, you can't. Yeah. When we, come on, dude. You, you, I, when you guys saw the first, when you saw that Renegades 
that little clip at Joe Con that year when it came out. It was the greatest thing that ever happened. Well, you're talking about oh, Resolute, Resolute. Resolute. When Resolute was shown for the first time, it was mm -hmm. the greatest thing I've ever seen. Man, yeah. you're talking about sound <laughs> I mean, you know, Roblox is like, we got a ninja? And he's just chopping yeah. bodies. I mean, don't wanna, dude, that's no. what G.I. Joe, that's what G.I. Joe should have. Personally, slap, you know what it is? Slap it on Netflix, slap it on Hulu, slap it on Amazon, yeah. and I guarantee you, mm -hmm. yep. every, us, the 80s kids, will have their kids into G.I. Joe faster than anybody, and yes. you'll see that on the road. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. I agree. How many guys would not be like, boy, this is what cartoons is. Absolutely. This is what it was. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 100%. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. Especially with, mean, with, with most people don't even have cable anymore. They have Netflix. Thank you. I mean, look, <laughs> at success, look at the success of Voltron. Voltron is on Netflix. It's going. It's already been approved by a third season. It has a success. I watched the first half of the third season last night. The first half is out now. That's what I mean, and it's actually really good. Can you oh, imagine yeah. that GI Joe on Netflix or on a place where they're not as strict, you know, as as confined to yeah. rules and regulations? And oh my God, oh, it could be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Hell, you could even do a live action one if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. I would love it. Do a movie for Netflix. Yeah, that would be dope. If do they have the right budget and everything and the right directors and writers. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. You need writers that understand the property. Yeah, I, I agree. They, yeah. they, then they would have something to push. Right now, they were talking about a, a millennial approach to G.I. Joe. What the fuck yeah. does millennial and G.I. Joe have to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means? It's right. You know what that means? G.I. Joe would not... Cobra is going to be some type of uh, a pharmaceutical company. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to be, it's going to be the House of Pancakes <laughs> versus the world. <laughs> really, the House of Pancakes is going to be cutting down trees in a forest. I know, but that, you know, ancient trees and, you know, picking puppies and stuff like that. And, and that's where, unfortunately, where I think that's what they're talking about. See, that's what I mean by Hasbro has no clue what to do with that line. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's also, it, my opinion, and it, it, it's because, remember when G.I.J. was created? When Ginger was created, it was, you know, a time when we had people who uh, were servicemen, mm -hmm. right? So you have people who have experience that can say, you know what? That's not what a freaking Hollister looks like. That's not what a, a tank looks like. You got to give it a little bit more detail. Now, half of these people, don't, you know, they're not. They have they no idea. Have, well, yeah. La Larry Hama was in the service, so he understood when he, he was and writing. He wrote beautiful cards. Yeah. He wrote cards that gave you the – he showed you what military talk is. He he wrote like your military guy. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Have you Except seen everyone was in E four though. Yes. <laughs> he never <laughs> by the big oh my god! It's true. The ranks were all over the place. The, the ranking <laughs> system. But um, I think I always chop that up to like GI Joe as its own entity. Yeah. So exactly. it's just, it, it it relates, but it's not one hundred percent similar you know <laughs> but um um what was i saying we me and uh cujo from gi joeberg we were talking about this just earlier today that the writers need to understand what the joe world is about instead of make like the new guy that's writing i think his last name is citizen he made salvo a girl but he didn't come up with a new backstory for the character so it's it's essentially the same character, just she's appearing, he's appearing as a girl. So someone asked him on Twitter, like, you know, did you come up with a backstory, like a file card, or is this just a, you know, a gender bent type deal? He goes, oh, someone else will figure that out. I'm like, this is the guy, right, the lead writer for G.I. Joe. He doesn't give a shit, because he's like, oh, the shit will sell or it won't sell or whatever, you know, and it, it needs to be people that, like, especially in the comics, I know it's a we bit. Gotta, you gotta have some sort of plan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they need just... to understand. Like, Hama did it. Have respect for the way it was done and what made it work, and emulate that. I mean, obviously, you got to do your own thing, but like, if it's gonna work and it's gonna stand the test of time, you need people who get it on more of a level than just you know, it's some guy with a gun. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, exactly. They're fighting or other or just gender swapping because you. We need to do it. More women readers? I, I don't. 
gender swapping for the sake of gender swapping? I yeah. I I I don't get the point of that. <laughs> You're gonna do it. Just just get make sure that the I don't care if it's a guy, a girl, a friggin' yellow, a, 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 an alien for Christ's sake. Whatever you want to do, just make sure that it works. Don't don't just don't do things for the sake of doing things with no plan behind it. No balls, exactly. you know. Don't half-ass it. Yeah. And that's the problem. You know, it's easier to just pick somebody. You know, how many times Dalton was a girl. Now, now Dalton in this universe is a girl. Uh, who, who else? Uh, we had so many character changes. And why can't you just come up with somebody new? I mean, yeah. we really have ideas. See that? You can't come up with something that's new. That's what I mean. uh, Sorry to cut you off. When uh, mm -hmm. this last wave, when uh, Celebris came out, Stiletto, when Stiletto was released, that was mm -hmm. awesome. Finally, a new figure, something fresh, something new. It was great. I, in my opinion, was great. People hated the figure. People said, "Oh, it's just a gimmicky," you know. But I think it was great. It just gave us somebody new, some somebody new to the universe. It, it was a good idea, the, the, but the the face sculpt was horrible. The face sculpt was horrible. It's like it's it's like if I were to like take my face and go like this. That's Stiletto's face. <laughs> so what, what I was gonna say. <laughs> In my own collection, right, because I have so many, you know, like I have multiple Dukes and I have multiple Flints and I have multiple, certain characters can get older and keep the code name. But like what happens when that guy gets killed in action? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't somebody else come and fill that space? You know, so like if Dial Tone retired, if they need a, another communication specialist and they want to use the code name Dial Tone, why not do that mm -hmm. and have it be an in-universe concept? Kind of like James Bond, you know? Mm -hmm. You have so many different guys play the role and they use the same code name. That's the way I saw it, at least. Okay. Because that's the only thing that can explain why they're all different men, you know? Do that with the Joes, you know? You could do no that. Way... I, I think, I, me, me, personal preference wise, I'd, I'd prefer a new name, a new code name, new character. Um, but, I mean, you could no, definitely do that with like the important ones. Like, if you wanted to do another Duke. Do that. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Because you got to add on. But what I'm saying yeah. is, like, there's a base set of Joes that always need to be there, but they couldn't be in action from the Vietnam era to the modern era. It doesn't make sense. Not no. all of them, you know. Certain ones you see them move up the ranks, and they can maybe keep their their code name, or they lose their code name because they gained, uh, um, you know, a higher status, a higher rank. You know what I'm saying? Like they left GI Joe, and moved on to like something high up in the government, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I feel like they should be doing that by now. Like that should have been a no brainer, you know? Different face, same specialty, same maybe similar weapons, like the modern version of those weapons, different person, you know? But you just keep the code name so that it's continuity. It's legacy, I guess is what it is. Mm -hmm. And they seem not to, they don't get that. I'm surprised no one is doing that. Like, except for Doc, the new <laughs> Doc, yeah, female doc is his daughter. Like, okay, do that with the other guys. <laughs> I don't get yeah. why. Like, you, you, they were on the right track, and and they they, they fell off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's strange. It, to, to your point, I can see main you know mainframe. Uh, it, it, I mean, the name stays with the technology, so you could technically name the uh, the next generation radio wave or something. You know what I mean? You could go with it. Circuit circuit yeah. breaker. You you could keep going with it. Exactly. I mean, like, if, if we're thinking of this stuff, like, there's no reason why they can't think of better stuff. You I know, know it's I mean? not my job. Like, if it was my job, could you imagine? I'd be doing this shit would be all over the place. I'd have so much of this done. Exactly. It's different. We're doing this for fun. Like, come on. <laughs> exactly. People that want to do this as a job for the rest of their life, hire them. Let them kind of take the brand to different heights. You know, don't don't hire just people who got the business side down, but don't understand. You got to have someone in there that actually has some sort of passion about it because yeah. and, and still has the business sense, but you got to have someone that's got to have a passion about it. I mean, because at, yeah, <laughs> at some can, point they'll get more, but you know, <laughs> Oh yeah. But I mean, make sure that, you know, you're, you're hiring people that with a, a creative go getter, uh, passionate mind. That's what you need to, to keep a line going. I mean, you're not going to, I mean, I, I, you can, businessmen, Come and go every day. They're generic. 
Okay. I mean, people go to business school all the time. I went to business school for Christ's sake. Didn't work out. Don't like it. So, I mean, <laughs> they grow, they grow on trees. And anyone who could go to school for bit for business, uh, get someone that's, that's, that's unique in there to give us something unique because what you're doing is not working. Obviously yeah, that's, yeah. that's the obvious. Point. Not working. Yeah. You got to give us some passion here because it just comes off as lazy. <laughs> it's true. So to add on to that, you also have to have people who I don't want to say love. You don't need to love the line. You need to know the line. Yeah. And personal opinion, none of those people know the line. One, because they all grew up, they were all born after the freaking 2000s. So nobody who remembers nowadays, you know, dude, you, I remember grabbing my first Joe, going outside, sitting on a patch of grass, playing my Joes, throwing them around. You know, my imagination went all over the place. I would take a piece of paper with string and that's a parachute to me. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. They didn't grow up with that. So they don't have that. So they don't see the passion we have for it. And I think that's the biggest problem. That they don't have anyone there that can say that it's not quite right. It should be this way and this way and this way. Yeah. It feels like they're... That, they just, yeah. they, that's the problem. Like, again, and again, I'm not trying to bash Hasbro because my personal opinion, the fact that they don't, okay, let's, let's dig into this one for you guys. Hascon. I think Hascon is the biggest joke. Let me tell you what Hascon is going to be. Hascon is going to be Toy Fair for Hasbro. It's going to be yeah. a place where they're just going to talk about themselves. You're basically going to yeah. have them talk about themselves to everybody. <laughs> I mean, that's all it is. It's a, it, why would you take or discontinue fun publication who's been doing it for 20 years, has been running JoeCon successfully? Now, granted, it's not a big, massive show, but it's a, it's a decent show where people love what they do. Brad Savage, I think I gave him all the kudos. He did a fantastic job. Why wouldn't you incorporate JoeCon into it? Why wouldn't you just, why have it? has con bring joe con in keep it going hire those people who could tell you this is what the community likes this is what the community wants they've been doing it for 20 years yeah generic business that's, men, that's why you got generic businessmen running hasbro's division with inflated egos and they don't think that they, they they're better than joe con they don't need well, joe no, con I think because I think and that's that's the point of of has con is because they're going to go in there like jose said and i'm i'm going to elaborate a little bit more on that uh they're going to go in there and, and basically eat, inflate their egos and talk about themselves the whole time because that's what it's about it's about only what we're going to talk about and that's it we don't i think it's the fact that also they don't have anything to show you <laughs> they know when they used to go <laughs> That's when they I mean. used to show up at Toy Fair and stuff, they used to have Joe product. You know what I mean? They used to have like a wide range of things. Now it's just going to be Marvel Legends and My Little Pony, you know, and a handful of other things. Um, yeah. Not tried and tested things, but, you know. But what are you saying, Jose? I'm sorry. That's what I was going to say. I mean, the perfect example is how do you do, how do, you do a $600 VIP ticket? Are you yeah. serious? $600? Who the hell can afford a $600 VIP ticket? The common... I mean, don't get me wrong, but I know I can't afford a six hundred dollar VIP ticket just to go see to go to Hascon, and I don't get I don't get something that I love. Come on! But Come I've on. heard I've heard people on the Star Wars Facebook pages saying, "Well, I have to get Captain Rex, so I'll pay whatever I have to pay to go get that." I'm like, you wait, what? You're gonna pay six hundred dollars to go get a? Twenty dollar action figure because it's got an exclusive paint job. You can't wait two that's months. A, that's another problem that that Mars the GI Joe community oh, is. They have a lot of people who um, they have the money to just throw away at stuff, apparently, and they do it. And Hasbro listens to them, but they don't listen to us saying that's not how you do it. Like when we say, you know, blue, dusty, and bazooka is a no, no cut that shit out like when we say stop selling us two packs and give us back our carded <laughs> figures single carded figures with the actual file card like we always got they don't listen to us instead they listen to the guys that are going to buy it regardless so it kind of sucks because we have vocal this vocal majority that kind of doesn't get it they're kind of spoiled in a way or they're just 
they just have it like that maybe and this vocal min minority that is critical of what we get because we've been there from the beginning you know and we remember when it was better they don't really want to hear us you know like like i remember uh doing uh, uh the review of the uh 50th sky striker and everybody attacked me because i said it was garbage i was like the fact that they didn't it's it's 30 years ago they made the original sky striker and you still didn't fix the wings it's still wings it's still, out it's still not a two-seater yeah it's still not a two-seater it's not a two-seater you got rid of the ejection seat it's wings out landing gear out as opposed to wings down landing gear out like in real life as much as people talk about realism in gi joe they're still willing to pay for substandard products so i mean hasbro's like Fuck it, we'll just keep it the way it was. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of just the way it, 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 it is. And they need to get more critical and let them know and be vocal about this stuff. And maybe then Hasbro will be like, shit, we need to, we need to change something or else no one's going to buy it. You know? And then they got to be disciplined and be like, I'm not going to buy it until you fix it. Mm -hmm. any, other com any other company, that's how it is. If Harley Davidson right now dropped a freaking neon orange you know, you know, a fat boy or something, all those hardcore dudes that love black and chrome would be like, fuck that shit, brother. I ain't getting another fucking Harley product. <laughs> it's done. They're like, I'm done, brother, until they fix it. And then they'd fix it and they'd be back in business. But th there's that weird fear, and I've heard it from so many, so many other G.I. Joe collectors that, well, if we don't support it, it'll go away forever. It's not going anywhere, guys. Ugh. It's not going Ugh. anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Ugh. It's not going to go anywhere. Don't, that's like the, the lamest excuse. Don't, it's well, GI Joe, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to go away forever. No, it's so. going somewhere. It's definitely going somewhere. It's going to go. Like said, it's yeah, not, but it, it's, it's not growing. It has it's to not, grow. It's not growing, but, but right now we're at the bottom of the barrel. Now, what, what, what's that saying? When, when you've hit rock bottom, <laughs> the only way is up. <laughs> It can't go any further, okay? Maddie Collector did the same thing with the DC, the DC figures. They, they, they threatened you and threatened you and threatened you. Then a year and a half later, DC Multiverse line comes out. So yeah. I, I don't believe any of those, those, those false threats. And we all have been through it. I mean, mm -hmm. we went through what we had. We had another hiatus back in 92, 93. Yep. We went, what, three years without a single thing to come out? Then they mm -hmm. relaunched it. And they, well, they kept the 12-inch going, which is um, which is incredible to me how they kept that going. But then the three and four, right? I never understood that. I think by that point, by '93, I mean, who? Was, I mean, I, and I again, um, there's not too many of 12-inch guys around anymore. No, I mean, those guys who, who remember playing with 12-inch GI Joes, how many of those <laughs> around? You know. <laughs> Many. I mean, and, yeah. and it's sad to say. It but, is. And that's why the 12 inch is, is almost gone. And that's what I feel. I feel that going, going back, this, it, we have to go somewhere. So I think the next would be a six inch line to support a six inch and a three and three quarter. But to get that, Hasbro has to see or has to, has to have somebody there to say that's what needs to happen. And I don't think they have that right now. I don't think they have that uh, person there pushing it. Back, you know, back in the days, they had people pushing, you know, behind it, behind the who's left. I mean, half of those guys are gone. They've been moved to other brands. You know, the guy's running it for the last couple of years. Now I think he's on what? My Little Pony? Are you moving? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got pony. demoted hard. Yeah. Seriously. And I feel bad for the Joe line because I'm a true Joe head. But when we have more bronies than Joe fans, I mean, that's, that's, that hurts. That does Dude. hurt. That's like a low I'm, blow, the lowest of all blows. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, it's incredible to me. It's, but I mean. And I, what, what baffles me is that they don't see it, but yet it's there. It's, it's literally Marvel Legends is there and Black Series is there, but they don't see it with G.I. Joe? Because like I said, the fan base <laughs> is not saying anything. Like when, think of all the times that they did a misstep with Star Wars. The fan base was like, no, this sucks. They all said it in unison, you know? And and look what happened with the vintage figures, the three and three quarter inch. They're back now all of a sudden. That's what I'm saying, because you spoke up. But the Joe fans don't speak up. They just take it. 
And I'm like, you got to say something. You got you to gotta say it. Yeah. The problem is when we say, we, when we say things, we go about it the wrong way. We, we bitch about things. Exactly. Like, uh, true. That's true. You, you ever notice that we're never united? We're never a one front. Meaning when we threw out, when, when the modern figures came out, everybody was complaining. I hate modern. I'm a, I'm an O ring kind of guy. I would bring me my O ring. Okay, now we we are we have to grow. You know, O rings are done. Let's let's you know why can't you find something good in this? No, no, no. It sucks. His arm sucks. Granted, there were some figures that had some bad you know parts and everything like that. But I think if as a community, if we really really supported the line, we would have kept going with it yeah. because that would have shown that it's there. I mean, we always get divided when you go to joke con. It's it's either <laughs> bitch it's a either a bitch fest no offense or it's it's never I, I feel like there's there's always a divide between the vintage guys and the modern guys. And that's what I was that's talking about it, earlier. It hurts. I mean that's yeah. the, the you know, and that's why I never understood we have to grow, we have to it has to change the modern you know, you have to bring the modern world into G.I. Joe. They were a freaking elite military group. How are you going to still have them shooting, you know, uh, carbines? How are you going to still have them shoot laser rifles? <laughs> Come on, dude. No, how are they going to be using Vietnam era everything? <laughs> I know, right? You know what I'm saying? It's 2017. You got rip cord, the old ripcord still wearing Vietnam era camo and halo jumping gear. Like, get out of here, man. <laughs> it's got to grow. I mean, you know. Now, I, again, I don't want to go the rice cobra way. We have battle suits and. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. I think some stuff that, was that, off. That went way off, but you yeah. know, but pursuit of Cobra, on the other hand, absolutely, mm. absolutely gorgeous. Love it. Best, best. The Come biggest on, mistake best. Hasbro ever made was stopping that. Stop yeah. that line. Biggest mistake they ever made. That has come on. Hazard Viper. Fantastic. Yeah. Phenomenal. Oh yeah. Freaking Shock Trooper. Phenomenal. Yep. Freaking Firefly. <laughs> oh my god. I love I freaking love that Firefly figure. Or Shadow Tracker, man. There's nothing Shadow like Tracker. that oh out there god. in the joke. Yeah. <laughs> Moneybags Destro. Um Iron the Iron oh. Grenadiers. Oh my god. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I that Iron Grenadier was a example of what Hasbro really can do. Yeah. If they really yeah. want it. I agree. And I've heard people say stuff like the parts fall off. And so I'm like, you're handling your figures wrong. Because I never have fall off. <laughs> the shoulder pads don't fall off. Money bags, Destro, shoulder pad never came off. The shit's fastened. If you're pushing the wrong things and pulling the wrong things, then you broke it. But that's not how it goes. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's a great figure. Kind of fun. Great it design. Is. Oh, I still have, thank you, sir, for sending me that. Huh? That money bags, Destro. Thank you. <laughs> that was like oh, the, yeah. that was like one of the biggest surprises ever. I was like, "Wait, what? What the? What the? Did I buy this?" Yeah, I, I was it. like, "Did I? I, I did I buy this?" <laughs> I found it for the best freaking price. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Yeah, I got it. I got to pick that up." <laughs> Second. Oh, where is it? Oh, you got some iron grenadiers up there. Uh, I'll give you some examples of. Uh, come on, guy. Seriously. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, the, Techno Viper. Techno Viper is, yeah. Look at that. That is, come on. It's fantastic. That's a figure. Yeah. Even the purple is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> and it's, and <laughs> what I mean is that it's a good representation of a little bit of vintage with a good modern take. Because yeah. you look at you look at the vintage uh, t uh, Techno Viper, and it it's still the purple. It's still that regal look to him. He's got pretty much almost the same tools. It's just a, a updated look for him. That's all it is. It's that just that simple. And you know, we have that. I think that's a great, up uh, you know, updated Cobra Commander. I yep. think this is a fantastic. Yep. I mean, the, even the Scarlet. I love this Scarlet. Oh, the Renegade I mean, one. Yeah, she's not bad at all. Yeah, the face. I know people always bitch about her face or the shape of her head or something, but the figure was. But that's fine. because everybody. And I know oh, everybody loves this one. Oh my I mean, god, I love that. It's my one of my favorite Dukes. That yeah. and that and the the other the one with the the rocket. Yeah, packs. The desert battle Duke. Desert yeah. desert battle Duke. Yeah, uh, so good. 
You see what yeah, I mean? That's a dope one. Dude. I know. Steel Brigade. A, so good. I have like game? five of those. So good. I mean, yeah. This yeah, is I what I mean. They continue like. Oh, Man, yeah, you gotta right. put these toys away. You're you're, you're making my mouth drool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a whole <laughs> shelf of mouth drool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, there's so much we can get so much that we can really, really get it. They just took the, they just gave they us just what we it up. Yeah, I mean, just got stuff up. Because like the vintage stuff, you know, just, it's weird because you think that you'd be able to vibe with the vintage collectors when it comes to the vehicles, because we don't get new vehicles. I mean, I started collecting when Rise of Cobra came out. So I, and I got Resolute and Rise of Cobra stuff around the same time. And I started to see that if you take them out of the context of the film, that's awesome shit. Like all of those dark, those, those uh, sneaking suits or whatever with the armor, that yeah. could be new, new age night force if you wanted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like updated stuff. The vehicles though, the freaking Rhino, Oh, I, I love the Rhino. It's still so on my list. Dope. I mean, I know it's a Sigma-6 vehicle, but they repurposed it. But still, that aesthetic where it's like some somewhat futuristic, but it's extremely utilitarian, mm -hmm. that's what we need. That's the Rock. What we need. The Rock is another good example of repurpose. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. So Dude, good. tell me, hey, Anthony, tell me you wouldn't love to see an APC brought to modern oh time. yeah an, um, an updated modern apc oh my god yeah absolutely 100 percent. another rico strata i don't know if you ever have it or you ever saw it the apc you're talking about the um the classic apc yeah the one that came out in 90 strata you just did a video on it it's the uh anti-personal carrier the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it came with the bats they repurposed it later on but that is a fantastic. Well, that's what, yeah, you're talking about what you did on these. Oh, the, you did oh it. yeah, the game. Monster Blaster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Monster Blaster. And then yeah. they called it, uh, then they repurposed it as uh, the Bat. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Brought to today would be fantastic. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what they're not doing. That's the problem. I've been saying this for so long. It's like, take the old vehicles. Like in the video I did where I said, if I ran Hasbro, if they gave me the brand, Take that shit and update it. Take all the old vehicles, update them, fix them, redo. I mean, think about it. We got 3D printers now. People, people are doing their own 3D printing at home. I know. <laughs> like, there's no excuse. You know, think about a, a, new, a new Rolling Thunder. You know what I mean? Think about a new, um, like, a, 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 um, and I know it would be freaking ridiculous price-wise, but make a proper flag. That doesn't buckle under its own weight. I want Cobra you know I mean? Island. Yeah, oh, hey. God. Oh my God! It doesn't even have to be that big. It does. It really doesn't need to be that big. Just make it. <laughs> just make it at least half the size of the flag, and I'm fine. Make yeah. it circular. Make it half the size of the flag. I'll buy it. I, I would buy Isn't it in RB. No, it would, be, it would have to be bigger than Terradrome. The Terradrome is half the size of the flag. Mm, is it? I don't own a flag, yeah. so I don't know. But I think dimension wise, a flag is. Huge. I mean, I don't, I don't personally see them doing anything remotely close to the flag. Exactly, they won't. Cost wise, let's just manufacturing wise, it would cost what? Ha! Huh, at least at retail, that would be a six, seven hundred dollar toy. Yeah, I know probably. they wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't probably. do it, and that, that's and then not only production wise, it's the. Shelf space. How many stores are really going to dedicate mm -hmm. that much? You could only put yeah, one of those at a time on the shelf. Nobody, Toys R Us would never great. give you the okay to True. use a four foot yeah. section. But that's kind of how it was when we were kids with the re the original flag. Remember, it was always like one or two in a store. And that was it. Yep. That's why so even many even with that big ass Tie Fighter. When I was working at Toys R Us part time, we were only allowed to put out two Tie Fighters at a time. Yeah, it took up too much real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Real estate, and then you, then everybody kicks it around. People dent it. Nobody yeah. wants to, looks like crap. Gets you know, uh, the guy buffing the floor hits it with the corner of the buffing machine. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just yeah. my last, and I gotta say, very underrated. And I don't know why people underrate this figure, but I think this is one of the best. Oh like, yeah, oh, I, I love this. No, that's no job. So he's good. on my desk right, right now. I on my desk right now, I'm about to review him. 
dude, I mean, just what comes in this pack alone. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's worth it's it. Incredible. It's worth it. Detach it. I mean, I mean, look at that 50 cow, dude. That means yeah, I know, right? Crazy. <laughs> That's dude, the gun the original dude. one should have came with. The 25th yeah. anniversary one should have came with, or the original design. He shouldn't have came with that laser gun. He should have came with a, a, a sniper rifle. Yeah. I mean, and, and I get it. I mean, I hear people, and this is the problem we have. Why wouldn't people support this? I mean, this is this is what we've been saying we wanted. Figures with more accessories. You got more accessories in this thing than ever before, mm -hmm. and yet people complained about, well, I can't move his neck side. I can't move his head sideways because his, his beard and his cuff, his uh, collar sticks up to yeah. Really? Come on. And then yeah. you know, <laughs> Like, yeah, but I'm seeing that right now. Like people comparing the Storm Collectibles uh, Ryu figure to the F figure arts Ryu figure, and their big criticism is that on the Re Ryu, the Storm Collectibles Ryu, because his torso is made out of rubber, his head won't stay down when you put it down; it pops back up. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> that's that's really, shit. That's it's like the that's, nit, that's, like like I said, people nit take nitpicks and make a big deal out of them. Like that's yeah. a that's a nitpick. You yeah. know what I mean? That's and, not a big deal. <laughs> and then on the flip side, you know, he can't he can't properly do the Hadouken. <laughs> you know, like if I get a a fucking fifty dollar figure of a certain character that has very specific poses and such, you know, and it's an import, I'm paying a premium. I want him to do the things. I want him to be able to do the move. If he can't do the move, then you failed, and he can't do it. But that's not the complaint. Like, most of the reviews never mention that. They all just say, oh, you know, his neck. I'm like. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all they got. Yeah. That's all they have. That's all they got to say. That's or they'll say, like, you know, there's more paint on this one than there is on this one, so it's better. And I'm like, but it's an action figure. Yeah. He needs to be able to do something. If he mm -hmm. can't do it, then it's not a good action figure. You know, it's not the best, I guess. You know, it can yeah. still be good. It's just not the best. But I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. The, the nitpicks are over are overrated. As, 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 and then I'm glad, glad we just went full circle because when we're – Talking about the the Thunderwing and the and the Ghost Striker <laughs> versus yeah, I know. the Sky Striker. It's like th those two. The, the Sky Striker doesn't even remotely compare to those other two. To, to the Thunderwing and the Ghost Striker. And it's um, a different type. Of, it's a different era. So for the era, yeah. that's awesome. That's it's three different eras. Exactly. So for the <laughs> for that era, the Sky Striker is the pinnacle. I give them that. But like we're moving forward. No, it doesn't do it. You know, it, it just doesn't. It, it falls short. Even the freaking True Hawk, the True Heroes True yeah. Hawk, that's an awesome vehicle. And people diss it because it's not a G.I. Joe branded vehicle. It's like it does everything the Sky Striker should do, the newer one should have done. It does it. And it does some of the stuff that, like, the Ghost Hawk used to do. Mm -hmm. It's yep. got a handle, you know, it, and you can take the handle off. Off, so yep. If you don't like that sort of thing, like, come on, man. And it's a good weight too. It's not too heavy, you know. What oh I mean? yeah, you can't even bitch about it being heavy. Exactly. You know what I mean? It, it's it's trying to give you a little piece of of each of each era, if you if you if you will. You know what I mean? Like it gives you that yeah. digital display or that visual display. It gives you lights. It gives you sound. It gives you the ejection seat. It gives you a parachuter or a, a, yeah. a trooper, a parachuter, and a parachute with it. Um, it gives yeah. you a lot. I mean, the removable handle is is a big deal too because most handles you got to flip them up. I mean, with the with both the the Ghost Hawk or the Ghost Striker and the Thunderwing, you have to flip up the yeah. handles. So, I mean, which isn't a big deal, but it's not a big deal to me. I know for a lot of people it is. I mean, after all, it's a toy. So yeah, it's you know, a toy. Got... It's a toy. Lots of lots of toys have handles on them. It's not that big of a deal. It's like that's why I'm saying it's it's nitpicks that get misconstrued as big deals and they're not. Yeah, like if it was a model, and they gave you that kind of toy stuff, I'd be like, get it out of here. That's not cool. It's a model. I want it to be exact yeah. in the scale that I got right here in my hands. Exactly. Well, you know, it's a toy. You're supposed to play with it, and it gave you features that allow you to play with it. How can you diss it for yeah. having those things? You know what I mean? It's it's form and function. Exactly. Like, exactly. if, if you're reviewing something, and let's say you had a, um, uh, uh, 
I don't know, an F-18, a, re, a, re, a, a, a model of the F-18, and it was made by BBI, right? You have that, you have that, that plane and you're reviewing it. And let's say, now this is, would be a big deal. Let's say one of the landing gears, are, instead of facing this way with the plane, it's going that way. That is a big deal. That 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 makes a big deal. That's a big problem with the design. It's not going to work. Uh, what was it yesterday? I just watched a, a, an emergency landing of a of a landing gear on a plane that was this way instead of this way, and the guy had to land it, and it didn't work. That's a big deal. That that causes a problem with the function exactly. of the toy and and uh, the overall aesthetics and looks of the toy. That's a big yeah. deal. That's not a nitpick. That's the things that you should point out. But little nitpicks, don't try not to make them such a big deal, people. <laughs> you know, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and then again, we also have another that I'm I'm starting to see in in the industry where we grew up with action figures, right? Have you guys noticed now everything is now a figurine? Yeah. <laughs> Don't play with nothing anymore. Now it's a, we yeah. buy it. Oh, that looks so cool. We take it out I of the packaging. And I put it on the shelf. Yeah. Shelf. Oh, oh, okay. It didn't, didn't move. Okay. That's been a that's been a nitpick of mine too. Like shit, when they say shelf appeal, I'm like, get that shit out of here. You if you don't play with this stuff and you know what it does. You shouldn't be talking about it because it's an action figure first. It does something. You got to be able to. If you're gonna review it, you got to be able to tell us what it does. You know, does it do the things that it says it should do on the package? If you don't play with them, how would you know? Exactly. And I, I get amazed how people tell me I when they when they see another person's pose and they go, "Wow, I never thought of posing them like that." Oh, oh my God, I yeah. didn't know they could pose like that. I'd be like, "Dude, you just." You <laughs> Sit there and play with it. Exactly. Move it around. That's what was the point of the of the of all the articulation is for. Why exactly. are you just taking out the package and putting it on a stand and just putting it on your cabinet? I mean, do something with it. Some people don't I even mean, take them out of the package. That's yeah. so even better. Oh, shit. That's a whole different discussion. That's a whole different. <laughs> that, that's. I don't understand. I, um um, I I open my toys. I don't I know what anybody. My toys too. When, when I yeah. put them there for me, there is never a, I feel that when people who, again, my opinion, people who, who see them like that and leave them like that, I feel that they just see that in the, the mentality is that's going to be worth something. Like yes. That. That's yeah. exactly what it's about. And it's not. That's not a toy. That is an investment yeah. that I'm doing in that. That's yeah. going to make me blah, 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 X amount of dollars. So I have to keep it pristine mm -hmm. because I know I'm going to get something out of it. Where yep. self, I open them. There's never thought of, eh, oh, that's going to depreciate in value. It's going to go down on me. And that, that's my toy. I'm going to take yeah. it out and it around. I want to see the gun. I want to see the case. I want to yeah. see the accessories. I want to pose them. It is what it is. And that's a, another little, you know, issue we have. We have that said in the community. Who the, what I call the openers and the, and the closers, you know. Yeah. And it's weird because, like, those days of, of, figures being worth like really being worth you know serious bank they're kind of gone it's all about what price ebay an ebay seller gets to first like if the first guy can sell it for more then everybody follows yeah you know what i mean because that's what you see it's never usually like i mean and if it's rare if it's really rare you know like freaking uh the gray what was he called dragon man or i think it's dragon man that Marvel legend, no, the gargoyle. You know what I'm talking about? From the Hulk wave, from the he's from a, um, one of the early um, Marvel Abomin Legends wave. Abomination. Gray gargoyle. Oh, Greg gargoyle. I think he's called Gray gargoyle. I could be wrong. Wait, anyway, wait are you he, talking about? Um, uh, I think it's the Gray gargoyle. Was he, he was a build a figure? In, no, oh, he was okay. a single carded figure. I think he was in the Fin Fang. Oh, Fang Dragon movie. Man. Dragon Man. Dragon Man. Yeah, that's what I said the first time. Remember yeah, we yeah. saw the yeah. whole wave when we were at the collector's convention last year? Mm -hmm. And that figure goes for like four or five hundred bucks. Yep. Yep. In okay condition. If it's pristine, it's like seven or eight hundred because he didn't even hit I don't think he even hit retail everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like he's super 
rare, like he was super short packed. And like, I've only seen him once ever. And I was at the convention and people have said like, you know, this is the most sought after Marvel, Le at least before Hasbro got a hold of Marvel Legends. That was the most sought after Marvel Legend. And I think that was a Toy Biz one. Right? Yeah, it was. Yep. It was a Toy Biz era. So yeah, it's crazy. I mean, just like Fin Fang Foom, a lot of people never got to put him together because they couldn't find all of the figures for that wave. So when you see them all together, it's not even like the fact that it's a quality build a figure. It's just huge. It is. <laughs> and, you know, that goes for a bunch of money. I mean, they started bootlegging him not too long ago, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 sad because it's not always rarity. Mm -hmm. Like, do you think that any of the vintage figures? And modern figures should ever cost the same amount. Like, have oh, you noticed? That? The, 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 I get this question a, a lot too. Like, how do I, how do we get the pricing, or how do I come up with the pricing? Unfortunately, uh, a lot of it. There's three. There's three parts to it when it comes to vintage, mm -hmm. right? Of course, availability. How much is actually out there, right? Then we got to Strata's point. Yes, I we I we cross reference other sites to see what it goes for. Because there is no manual. There's no manual. There's no way of knowing. So, but I feel that when I price my, my, my toys, my loose toys, I'm giving a fair deal, right? I don't go, you know, I don't go for the top price. And uh, of course I can't go for this because I have a, I spent a certain amount of money to buy this figure. Mm -hmm. So I have to, I'm a business, you know, I have yeah. to have my, money. what's the point of doing this? If I'm like, no offense, but I got to make money exactly. to keep it going. So, exactly. But I have my set margins. I know what I'm going to mark it up. And thanks God, I feel that I, I price very well. Now, I, you told me, Anthony, you know, thanks God you, you've been shopping with me. I don't think that I, I, I'm too crazy um, in my pricing. I try to keep, you know, keep everything reasonable. I keep, you know, we keep our prices down. Um, yeah, I agree. And, and going back, you know, because uh, I have people who also ask me, why is it that I don't, offer any type of discount right and the reason is because we are we are low enough yeah i mean um i'm i'm low enough where i don't feel that i have to go out and offer my low prices plus on top of a discount on top of that That's well you why do offer a discount you have the reward system i have the reward system which is there you go if you go into it go into it i i, I oh i have it there there's a reason why i have it but we don't we don't run um, uh, Black Friday. We don't run a monthly sale. I don't run a it, it, because I'm already priced on where I need to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, but Strider's point, yes, yeah, Strider. A lot of it comes from, unfortunately, this right now the industry. Toys are mm -hmm. hot. Right, yeah. toys are now come out. Toys are now come out. Let, gentlemen, let, just to let you know. Uh, let's thank the toy hunter. Let's thank all those comic book men because toys <laughs> are now become. The next lesson, I'm putting my kids through school. You know, I got more people who are now, we are, there are more buyers in the, in, in the industry right now than they are selling. Yeah. Unfortunately, just like the market, when someone gets 500 bucks for one stupid little figure, everybody follow. Because if that guy can get it, why can't I get it? So yeah. the next guy gets it. And then the yeah. next guy gets it. And then it stays there. That's it. That's that. That's where it's going to stay because yeah. everybody can get it. But if, Anthony, if you don't give me what my ridiculous price, then I, that forces me to come down, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how the market is. Yeah. It's, it, exactly. um, we have people that have, I don't personally, uh, I've seen, I, like, I've seen your, your previous stride and when you talked about the marking and everything like that, and I agree with you to some degrees where some of it has gotten out of hand. Yeah, it has. Uh, it has. I, I'm, as a business, I could tell you, um, it's gotten out of hand. I, I, I think it's, it's gotten to the point where, you know, now it's, it's, it's way too high, for, even for me. I mean, I look at some figures and I go, why? Why is that going for that much? Yeah. I don't want to Especially when they just it's came out. Long. Yeah. When a figure's brand new, there's no reason why it should be priced more than the, 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 the retail. Maybe five bucks more, I get it. You want to make, make five bucks on something? I, I completely get that. And I'm talking eBay specifically. 
know what I mean? Like, there's no reason why. Like, uh, what was it? I was trying to track down the Marvel Legends Ares, which I don't even really collect Marvel Legends at all. I'm actually going to sell a majority of the rest of my, the majority of my Marvel Legends on Sunday to a collector. But I'm trying to track that down, and people want like seventy dollars for it. It's like it's not that big of a deal, guys. People try to sell Commander Gree after San Diego Comic Con for 50, 60 bucks. I'm like, you guys know it's going to be in the store in like two weeks, right? Like, there's no reason for that. That's unnecessary shit. It's 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 the guy. <laughs> it's the mentality of I'm entitled and I gotta have it and I gotta have it now that it's messing it up for everyone. And that's where we're we're constantly in this vicious cycle of licking our own asses. Excuse me for using that terminology, but we're constantly chasing our own tail. I'll use that instead, okay? Instead of the the vulgar <laughs> one. <laughs> we're constantly chasing our own tail because we can't get away from people saying no. Well, it's a, I got oh well, Charmus Prime got it, so I got to get it now. You know they they don't get that. Just patient. You pay the retail, the the market would settle down. It would be easier. Don't you don't have to jump on everything at the at the the drop of a dime. You know what I mean? Just take it easy. It's not these are <laughs> these, these figures are they're not going to go away in in two weeks. You know what I mean the 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 average Marvel Legends wave lasts for at least six to eight months, nine months. You've got almost a year to get them. Some of them last even longer. I'm still seeing Ant Man waves at Toys R Us. That's true. Like, I'm I mean, the stuff doesn't go anywhere. And then when you get it, I feel like people don't appreciate it because it was just the fact that you had to get it now that you don't even appreciate the figure for what it is. So, I agree. <laughs> My, mind you, I, I, I'm in the business. Um, and it just baffles me sometimes when people go crazy because they have to be the first one on the block to have it, or they have to be the first guy to, you know, it's just wait, just wait off, just wait a little bit, and you'll get it. You'll get it like everybody else. Uh, the first a perfect example: this last wave of um, Joes that came out, the two packs. We got the zombies. Everybody went nuts for it. Zombie hits the whole time, right? Then Hasbro releases the two pack zombies. What happened to the single carded zombies? They have the price they were when they right before they. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I remember when they were eighty dollars. Me too. Because I was considering selling it. I was like, "Well, I could use the eighty dollars. Um, <laughs> I could buy almost a wave of figures for eighty bucks." So. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I mean, and now, and now, when they when they came out with the two pack, like you just said, Jose, now now they're twenty bucks. I mean, and it and it yes. happened, or less, yeah, fifteen. You know, yeah, and and then you know, there's there's other stuff that happens in the background, you know, that a lot of people don't get to see. There's some, you know, what also, and a little bit of the fault is the man. There is fault in the manufacturer. Um, for driving that and they do it on, I, I personally believe it, there's some fault to them they drive it because i tell you what as a, as a business um there's only two people you can get the last wave of gi joe there's only two places you can get them either toys r us or you got to get them from uh we all know bbts that was a sign exclude that was a what they call the shared exclusive as a business who, who has an account with hasbro i was told i cannot get it that's Why? <laughs> They were the only people that the G.I. Joe line was allocated to. Toys R Us, because they had the brick and mortars to support the brick and mortars stores. And then BBTS, because they ran the, they are the, in this industry, they're one of the biggest uh, to, adult toy collector sites there is. There is nobody bigger. I'll be the first one to tell you they're the biggest there is. Um, they locked that deal. Yeah. That's bullshit. It's, I mean, it's, it is. It is what it is, but it's bullshit still. And so then what happens? Everybody runs to Toys R Us. Everybody picked them up really quickly. You know, then they went on, uh, on eBay. They slapped them off for forty nine ninety five. Everybody wanted them first, so they paid the 49 Now you got that. Now it sets a trend. Now you have to wait for that to end. So 
the market's already been set because the guy who got the 50, the second guy wants the same thing. The third guy wants the same thing. And it just, it, 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 that's the way it goes. Yeah. I mean, vintage is totally different. Yeah, vintage is totally different. That's, that's a supply and demand straight out. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. Yeah. And no offense. I mean, uh, right now, if my personal opinion, anybody who's out there, anybody who wants to complete it, Complete your 82 to 80. I would say from 82 to 86, start completing it if you want to get them. Because let me tell you something. It's not that easy to find anymore. 82 oh, yeah. straight arms are very difficult to find, even in the wild. Um, it, everybody who had them, remember something. There was only so much produced. Yep. Now, let's just hypothetically say 10,000. Let's just say 1,000 units were made. Uh, you figure, what, 1,000 were made. 200 were were given out, right? Hasbro gave them out to to to, to stores to pick them up, and, you know, give away. There's 800 units left. Now that hits the market. 800, you, how many get damaged, right? Damaged O-rings, loose legs, chip, the thumbs. I mean, it's fine. Now you're talking years later. What's really left? Yeah. How many are destroyed? So that where people say, how do you get the price in there? Unfortunately, there is no you. We we have to do the math like everybody else. We have to take this pricing, this price, and this price, and we try to do our best to keep a, a happy medium. But again, yeah. it, it becomes a supply and demand. I have to, you know, I, I have to get it, and if I'm fortunate enough to get it, but I, I, as a businessman, I have to say, I have to add on my cost, my cost to get it, my cost to travel, my cost. To ship my course, you know, it, it, it adds to the price, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, my only advice right now get it now <laughs> if you can get it complete, get it, yes. If you or, or at least if you get it loose, make sure it's it's got tight joints and try to outsource the the, the weapons after, but that's kind of tough even on its own. I mean, I could barely find, I could barely find, like, if I get um. Like, let's say, like, I got this from you today. Thank you for the imp. It's awesome. Um, it's going to go with my, my frag viper perfectly. Um, but, uh, you know, let's say I got, I got this and it was missing one of the missiles. Like, I, now I have to outsource this missile because, you know, there's no reproduction being made of the imp anytime soon. You know what I mean? Like, I, I have to find this. And if it's not on eBay, I'm screwed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I'm, I'm subject to eBay's prices. So it's whatever the market is at that particular time. Um, and it all also decides and if I want to wait and maybe down the road, it'll be cheaper. But with, with, uh, vintage stuff like this, the, the vintage figures, like you're saying, it's, it's hard. It's tough to find. It's tough to collect. I mean, there's, it's either they're broken or especially tabs. Oh my God. Tabs are such a big deal with, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, a huge deal. It's a big difference. Um, and it's very rare that y you find a vehicle with a broken tab that's still actually you can function with it, depending on where the tab is broken. But you get my point. It's, it's gotten to the point where you almost have to say, you know what, I'm going to buy it with the broken tab. And I tell people, I have to yeah, do it. I, I, get it, I, get it. I say, get it. Just get it. At least have it in your collection. Yeah. Worst case scenario, you'll yeah. find one later. Uh, if you're lucky enough to find one later with that, that you can replace it with, do that. Then not say, well, it's going to be cheap. It's dude. These is has become. They don't get easy to find. Yeah. They're hard to find, and a lot of people forget that. So my only advice to anybody out there who wants to complete, get them now. Yeah. Go out there. No, especially your vehicles. Especially your vehicles. Go get them. If you if you want GI Joe vehicles, go get them and find them. Find yeah. them. You may have to, but again, if if you pick it up now, you if you're lucky, you go to a toy store, or another toy, toy show, somewhere else where you can find the parts you need. Get it, then sit back and say, you know what? Let me not get it because it's gonna cost me five bucks more. Because trust me, later on, it's gonna cost you a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It is, and that that's it's unfortunate, but that's the lay of the land. Unfortunately, you know, it sucks, but. Um, yep crazy where, where toys have become. I know. <laughs> I'm actually going Sunday and I'm trading. Uh, the guy still has to text me back to exactly what he wants, but I have, 
I have so many old Marvel Legends and, and, and modern Marvel Legends that I'm just like, whatever. So we're going to do a trade, and I found a, a, a fully complete general. And I, he's going to straight up trade me for the general, and he's going to straight up trade me for a, a couple fi a couple figures. He's going to throw a couple figures in with the deal. But, um, I mean, he's not even asking for exclusives or anything like that. He's just... He just wants – there's specific villains. He, he's a big villains collector. So um, we're going to do a straight-up trade for a, a general. It's and, and that's rare you see someone wanting to trade straight up, especially a guy that actually has a, a, a brick-and-mortar shop that he sells from every sun, Saturday and Sunday. So That's pretty cool. Yeah, so um, I told him, I said, hey, you get any modern figures, let me know. He's like, I have a whole tote. Well, we all bring that too. I'm like, shit. <laughs> but, but like I said, get them the way you can. Like Jose said, like like Strident saying, like we're all saying, get them while you can. I mean, try to get creative. You know, to try to do trade stuff like that. But I mean, if it's in good shape, I mean, at least take a shot at it. Um, I mean, I know Strident. Strident's looking for a bug right now, and those are going up in price. They keep going up. I mean, it's 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 rare. I, I showed him what was it last week? The the one for forty five on that was on a collector's page, but that's rare. Yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely, it's, I think the, the going price for um, I mean, a complete bug. We're talking with the with the driver, which is a rarity, uh, unbroken. Yeah, you're looking at at least a good what sixty minimum. Sixty minimum. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I should be about to go and praise for them. That's how much I paid for my bug. I paid sixty for my bug. So and people, you know, we we go well, why so much? It's very simple. Remember when when that was created? That was it wasn't yeah a popular <laughs> at the time. It wasn't a popular vehicle, yep. and the availability wasn't there, so they were not not a lot were produced. How many actually survived? That's a part the part of vintage that a lot of people forget about is what's left. Everything it's it's what's left. This is well, that's why I always point out produced. that there's no, there's little reason why modern and vintage should be equal in price, because it's vintage. There's mm -hmm. far less of that shit, you know, yep. out there than the modern. Modern stuff you can still find it in a discount store. Sure. Vintage shit you are not going to find that in a store unless it's a like like big fun out here in in Ohio. It they sell all kinds of old figures from when we were kids to now you know people sell their collections to those guys and then they resell them yeah. um you find them at you know toy shows or you find them at flea markets but you won't find vintage in a store so the vintage already should be at a premium your modern stuff and most times it is you know especially if it's in good condition your your modern stuff i mean like do you remember when uh pursuit of cobra low light was over a hundred dollars <laughs> Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like now he's twenty no bucks. Reason for that. Now he's twenty bucks because he's been re-released, and then the Pursuit of Cobra ones dropped. It's like, come on, yep. you know what I mean? Or or Moneybags Destro. Mm -hmm. He was going for all kinds of Holy prices. Holy shit! Kinds was he going for crazy price. price? I got him for eight ninety nine at Walgreens, and at the oh. time he was showing up in uh, on Amazon and eBay for like three four hundred dollars. I'm like, wow. Holy shit. Right now. Same thing with um, Ultimate, you know, the 30th uh, Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow. He was mm -hmm. going for insane prices. I remember, and then I, I was like, I'm just going to wait. I told everybody, just wait. Go to your Target. Just check every now and then. It'll show up. I got him at Target. I think I got him for $9.99, about 10 bucks. I didn't pay that 98 bucks, you know, 150 bucks, like, He's in circulation now. So, you know, there's a lot of places that get away with that because there's people who can't wait and they have the disposable income. I mean, and that's how business is staying. You know, that's how you stay in business is you, if they're going to give it up, then, hey, it doesn't hurt to be the person to receive. But at the same time, you know, when they start talking community, you do shit like that. You kind of screw over the rest of the community because, you know, there's something else that's going to stay at that high price because people actually bought it at that high price. Yeah. And, and speaking show. with inside the community, I'm glad we're, we're talking about that. Speaking with inside the community, there's, there's this other split. Now, we've been talking splits. The, that's kind of been the trend the whole night. 
We've been talking <laughs> about how, how people are one side or the other side, and they kind of clash with each other. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a thing that I don't really necessarily think that should clash. There should be an overall understanding here of the of, of, of what I'm about to get to, which is the blatant overpricing on a Facebook page. Now, wh when you're in that Facebook page, you're not even on the eBay market. It's yeah. different. You're in your own market. And on top of that, you have to trust the person to ship out the figure. Yeah, I know, right? Hopefully. I mean, it's, it's gotten really bad. A lot, a lot of pa Facebook pages have gotten really bad. Uh, Marvel Legends. Uh, but um, as far as Joes go, I, I don't – there's, a, there's, a, there's a, like a, a lot more respect between Joe collectors than a lot of the other guys. Um, and I've noticed that. I, I don't think I've ever seen someone get screwed over on a, on a Joe fan page with a trade or uh, a whatever uh, sale. I have. You have? You have? Okay. Oh, yeah. I got rid of my um, – remember I told you about it. I traded – a dude had um, low light. It was about 11, maybe 10 Joes. Low light was in this lot. Oh, um, I remember now, yeah. You know talking about? And I traded in my um, my 30th Sky Striker because he was looking for a Sky Striker. He said he couldn't find in his area. So I was like, all right, you send first. When you give me the um, you know, the, the tracking information, I'll send and then I'll give you the tracking information. So we do it. Everything's cool. I get the box. I open it up. It's pieces of figures, no low light, um, and uh, no, almost nothing that I saw that was in the – the pictures was in that <laughs> that lot so i was like dude you 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 really screwed me over you need to fix this so he asked me what he could do to make it right i said you could start by sending me low light i'll send you all this shit back you can at least send me that you know what i mean and he's like oh i'll do it i'll do it i'll do it then he just disappeared off facebook so like i was like i told people i reported him in the group i was like you can't you know don't trust this guy even if he shows up with a new you know, accounts or whatever. This is what his real name is. I was like, I put it on blast. Like this guy completely, you know, screwed me over. And I was like on the up and up with him. He got a near, it was almost new. Cause I opened it. I reviewed it. My uh, sky striker, put the stickers on it, took it apart and put it right back in the box. And I was about, I was trying to find people locally to sell it to, but I couldn't find anyone. So when he was like, Hey, I'll trade you all this stuff. I was like, sure. That yeah. works. Those, those folks exist, you know. Yeah, they're 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 shitheads. I automatically block like whenever someone puts a post up that's like, "Don't deal with this person." I automatically just go. I, 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 even if I've never had a conversation with them, automatically blocked. Exactly. Immediately, automatically blocked right away. But the overpricing and now the 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 second point I want to get to in this is it's not only is it overpriced. Now it's kind of a who's who of what you think is overpriced. Now, it's, if it's by the masses, then I guess it's overpriced. The majority says that it's overpriced, then it is. Um, it, some people don't think th certain things are overpriced. They're just like, whatever. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'll pay for it. But the, the other part is that the, the, the people saying he can post whatever he wants. If you don't like it, don't, don't keep scrolling. Now, it's it's like the most passive aggressive thing you could you could fucking do. Yeah, the it, internet it's, it's, un, it's untrue, and it's it's completely unfair. Now, you can't first of all you can't take away people's right to say whatever they want on the internet because God forbid you do that. You can't do that <laughs> because people are entitled. You know what I mean? That's that's how people are nowadays. Um, but in certain in certain circumstances that it's needed you know what i mean like some people need to be called out on their shit yeah and I agree. it's it's completely unfair that you're doing that if you're inside of a community it's supposed to be a community i get trying to make a profit you want to make a profit go for it but when you're trying to make 60 dollar profit that's that's not that's just not that's no, unnecessary off of, a, off of a 10 or 15 dollar object it's like oh. that's like I like I get you trying to turn it for a buck, or if it was an important piece to you, sure. You you want to turn a buck? I completely understand. I su that's that's neither here nor there. But the over overpricing is absurd, and I've seen it 
so many times it's it's ridiculous um and that's that's the the major thing i wanted to bring up was was that that there's there there's that divide where people actually defend the ass muncher you know what i mean that's that's trying to overprice everything you know what i mean like it's yeah well he could do whatever he wants don't 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 get on his back for it and people shouldn't be volatile towards him don't be volatile no. just be like come on man uh, and and I kind of blame some of the Facebook groups because they should have some sort of regulation here. I, well, yeah, I understand because, like folks are volatile because the shit's outright wrong. It's kind of disrespectful for you to be cool, be in a community, and then you're taking advantage of people in the community. Yeah. And so people get mad when they notice, but then for you to say that they can't, they don't have a right to say anything, like yeah, that's I, yeah. that's that's complete bogus. That's yeah, I don't get that. But you know, then again, I don't, I don't stay on those sites. I kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say? Sorry. <laughs> you know what I was gonna say? It, it, the, the problem is the people that give in. I mean, yeah. if you, it, because they have to be the. The problem is, the, those guys only exist because they get what they, what they wanted. If nobody gave them what they wanted, they wouldn't exist, right? Yeah, that's true. If a guy, okay, a guy. Manages to get his hands on this new, this new wave before everybody else, so he slaps it on there for sixty dollars when he knows it's going to be a twelve dollar item. What happens when that first guy gives him that sixty bucks or gives him what he wants, and he knows he's got a clientele? But if there's no clientele, wouldn't support him, and that's where I kind of be like, don't. I'm not trying to knock anybody's business. Hey, do it. If you got a guy who's willing to give you, you can't really hate on him because. Yeah. It's like, again, don't hate the guy, you know, don't, don't hate the player, hate the game. I mean, he yeah. found somebody who's willing to give him his money. Now, do you have a right to say, hey, guy, you know, that's unfair that you're jacking it so much? You do, you know. Um, but I also don't feel like, because I've been accused of, one of the biggest things is when I started coming up, it was, uh, I managed to land, there was a, a big mix up with one of my distributors and I managed to get a bunch of, some Joe stuff, right? Mm -hmm. People automatically accuse me of scalping, going to all types of Toys R Us and get it. Not true. Yeah. So I had to go out and defend myself and be like, you don't know what happened. I was able, now I was requested, I was told I needed, it was a, it was a sh wrong ship and I needed to send it back and I fought to keep it. And I managed, you know, it became a thing, but I, I was able to get some, but everybody accused me without knowing. So you got to kind of yeah. also. I, well, that's I don't want to, you can't accuse people of shit like oh, that. I, I got, I got, I got one, one group, one whole group banned me because they, some guys say I was scalping and I was doing a disservice to the the, the, the Joe community because look at me. That's mind bullshit. You, mind you, I was, I think I, I was selling the 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 vipers, the twin zombie vipers at twenty four dollars. So I, either I'm a lousy scalper. I just don't know, you know, and nobody, <laughs> they just automatically assumed because I was able to put it up and I, and I put up a simple post. I just say, Hey guys, if you're having trouble finding them, I got my hands on some, um, but you know, uh, they're going to be gone. And every, Oh, I got so attacked for that. So sometimes, you know, it's, it's, we got to be kind of careful before we go crazy on somebody just cause you never know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That is true. Like I get, I yeah. get if like, I, I get if it's within reason, like you weren't selling things outside of reason. Like that's, that's the stupid thing is that that whoever, whoever went after you is just ignorant. They're, they're just, they're ignorant and they probably have been in the group for a long time. So they have a voice, a louder voice than other people. Cause I've run into those assholes before and they yeah. think, they think because they've been in the group a long time or they know the admin, they can get away with whatever the hell they want, which is horse shit. But uh, you know, and uh, but you weren't selling things ridiculously priced. I mean, that's that's a that's that's normal. You know what I mean? Like uh, that just doesn't even make sense. That person was just an idiot. Just go away. That person. Stick your head in the sand and inhale, please. The problem is you have your bandwagon. You know, your 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 fifty fourth guys that just join join in and you know in cabinet yep. where it's just you know it's. We gotta sometimes we gotta sit back and see both sides again. Exactly. Yeah. If, if, if you think it's it's an enormous price, 
then do your research. Go go to go to a, a different site. Go somewhere else. See if you can find it. But if you if you're gonna give this guy what he wants, then you can't turn around next time he doesn't. And you, somebody can't complain that he's overjacking somebody. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Please, you know, they gave him what he wanted. Now he knows he has a clientele. He has a market. It's true. It's true. I mean, it's business. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you guys tell me if I'm wrong, but you know. No, you're definitely you're definitely not wrong. You're on point. Um, it's just you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just it's just it's just obnoxious when you you know you see you see people just get volatile for for no fucking reason, and it's just. It's just like I. It's it's just aids to my eyes. I don't need this it's right now. I <laughs> I, I, I just I just leave the group because once I see it, I'm like, I think the whole group's like that, and I want nothing to do with it. It's goodbye. Well, it's, it's the internet. It's there's only two speeds, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like nothing and fucking insane. <laughs> Not, annoying like, and more annoying. <laughs> yeah, man. It's just that's the internet, man. Truthfully, hey guys, I don't mean to cut you off. This has been fantastic. I just realized the time and <laughs> yeah, oh, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's it is hitting the one o'clock mark on the East Coast. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I have to um, but I want to thank you. I want to thank Strider. and thank yeah. you for inviting me on. Um, it was a blast. Um, nice talking to you, man. Sorry it took so long to get there. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> uh, but it, it was fun, you know. And Anthony, uh, your order be going out real soon. It should be going out tomorrow. Cool. cool. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you guys later. Right. Yeah, we got to do this again, buddy. Absolutely. Let me know whenever. All right? All right, bud. All right, oh, take well, it easy. Be safe. Yeah, man. The scalping game is, is, is frustrating. Well, the, the internet game is annoying. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's why I don't deal with them like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't have the patience. I just don't. You know, I used to. I used to try and educate and talk to people and disprove them and put the facts in front of their own face so that they can't deny it. Now I'm kind of like, fuck it. If you don't want to, if you don't want to understand where I'm coming from, you don't want to hear my point. I don't really have anything to say. What's yeah, the point? Exactly. I I don't even have a voice anymore, really, when it comes to. That silliness. I, when it, when it, when I ever see it, just a price, I just uh, <laughs> like whatever. I just I just I just go to a, another group, or I just I, I don't even I'm not even really on uh, Facebook anymore. Besides posting on uh, my ODC, that's me page here and there. So yeah. um, I try to stay off it as much as possible um, because it just you know it's it's nice some days it's like i call i call facebook and the internet bipolar it's nice some days and then it really be a prick the next day so oh yeah it's almost like a it's almost like a it's like a a, a, a drug addict. addict it's like a drug addict you know and your drug addicts when they're all high they're all happy and shit and then when they're they're <laughs> they're <laughs> shaking his head That's so wrong i know i know they're all happy and then when they're they're on the you know the high runs out and they're all pissed off and angry. Yeah. I'm, yeah, it's annoying. Slightly. But yeah, that's why, like I said, I, I stick to my own little, you know, stick to my own groups, stick to certain groups, and then I don't mess with others. You know, like I remember when I posted, I was on a Joe fan page and I posted pictures of Fenris Company and people kept saying, what is this? Who, who are these characters? And I'm like, you see the G.I. Joe's in the image, right? I'm like yeah, but no, this isn't a this is a, a a GI Joe fan page. You can't post stuff like that here. I was like, so I can't post complete like finished artwork involving GI Joes. I mean, it's photographs of GI Joes in situations, and I can't do that. He was like, nah, we can't do that. Someone else that was a moderator jumped in and was like, no, you can do that. Please do continue doing that. Why? What? Yeah. So it's like you have people. <laughs> who, you know, they, they're, they're too, I don't know how to describe it. It's like they're too literal, you know, like it has to be G.I. Joe face characters, you know? So if it's not Snake Eyes and, you know, Scarlet and Duke, that shit, you know, then they don't want to see it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, it's frustrating 
dealing with all the dynamics of all these different kinds of groups. I just want a group that stays true to whatever the focus is and no bullshit. And then that's it. We're mm -hmm. done. Well, we that's why you it. have your own group now. Exactly. Exactly. I don't have the patience for that other shit. But, um, yeah, that was nice. I haven't talked to Jose in a little while, so. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. You guys should definitely go check him out. Um, bigboycollectibles.com. Uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be your white knight too. We'll go check out uh, Strident. Go no, go join his Patreon. God damn it, <laughs> worth it. You get you get vlogs and other great stuff. Oh, your one vlog isn't working. I wanted to. Tell oh you. no, I fixed it. You did fix I it. Okay, because I was like I was like, come on, man, I need my vlog today, man. <laughs> yeah, I fixed it up. I, I I saw your message and I um. I jumped on. I don't know why. I think it was set to. It was set to something that I normally never set it to. So I was like, "Let me fix this, man." And then eventually, I ended up having to re-upload it. Mm. So, but yeah, it didn't take long. I did it all like right after I caught your message. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um. um, um what were you, you going to say? Go ahead. No, it's just uh, the the trying to keep up with that is so weird. <laughs> Keeping <laughs> up with the. Um, Patreon because like I tried to pretty much thoughts from my car and like reviews that I know aren't going to get much in, uh, attention on you know YouTube mm -hmm. I just put them up there because the people who are on there want to hear that stuff you know yep. I don't like YouTube it's strange you know like I always did G.I. Joe reviews and if you look at the old G.I. Joe reviews nobody looked at them but then you look at if when I look at my my top videos, they're all G.I. Joe related. So I'm like, so is it only top G.I. It's only G.I. Joe related from a certain point? Because <laughs> like, like I started out doing Pursuit of Cobra reviews. I did Duke. I did uh, Desert Battle Duke. I did uh, Snake Eyes. I did Beachhead. I did um, mm -hmm. Firefly, uh, Alley Viper. I think I did them one after another. Um, nobody was watching them. That's, and they still don't have many. My Pursuit of Cobra reviews, like... I put like a, a, I don't know, at least eight or nine of them out there, maybe 10. And uh -huh. it's like people just, I think a lot of people just found me. And yeah. they're like, they don't realize that I've done reviews before because I, I like got a whole bunch of other stuff that I have variety and as far as variety goes. Um, yeah. But most of my views are like DCUC stuff because I did a ton of those. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but no, pe pe people don't watch my Joe reviews as much, but that's gonna, not going to stop me from doing them, though. I don't give a shit. It's not like I'm yeah, getting yeah, paid. Yeah. It's not like we're getting paid to do this, you know? Oh we do this because we love it. Oh, by the way, VidMe, I have signed up, and I'm going to start uploading. Um, fuck YouTube. <laughs> as I upload to YouTube. No, no but I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna seriously start uploading to I'm gonna upload to both, but yeah, that's what Vid, I was planning on. VidMe, I think, is gonna be the well, the, the stepping the stepping stone. Once it yeah, once it starts getting over, I don't think I don't think Daily Motion's the way to go. I don't think Daily Motion is. It doesn't have no. the that feel that you need. Well, that it doesn't have, the, doesn't have the um. It doesn't have the uh, audience. Yeah, I just was putting things up there because I already had an account and it was just easy to put stuff up there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have the, the, the interaction with subscribers yeah. and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was, it was bad when I, um, I'm subscribed to uh form BX two five seven and, uh, on his channel on, um, on, uh, daily motion, I think he has like twice as many videos as I have. But we have similar numbers in views, and and I don't have hardly any views. So I'm like, this guy's phenomenal. How is he not getting any views? You know what I mean? And then on YouTube, he's got you know more, a lot more views. So it's strange, you know. I just put my shit up there because it was easy to put it there, and I wanted to have it somewhere other than YouTube, you know. Yeah. So exactly. and most, I think a lot of the videos I put up there are videos that would get flagged on YouTube for some stupid reason, you know? Yeah, so, we can actually swear. Yeah. <laughs> like, this, this this, whole podcast will probably be on the restricted list because I swore in it. Like, that's... Yeah, I don't even... Yeah, I don't even care about the, the restricted list. That shit makes me angry. 
It's it's complete garbage. It's it's totally garbage. So YouTube has turned into complete PG crap. Yeah, it doesn't make and, sense. And even the big the big guys, the big guys need to need to put their foot down and leave. Go go go. I mean, still up. I mean, if you still want to upload, just upload less. Yeah. Because really, the 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 what's it called? Uh the algorithm, there we go. The yeah. algorithm for YouTube has changed again. So yeah. if you don't upload at least once or twice a week, they don't give a shit about you. They don't push your video. They yeah. don't help you out at all. And now on top of, of uploading at least once or twice a week, your videos have to be longer. They want longer videos. They don't want two, three, five-minute videos anymore. Yeah. So it's, it's becoming – more painstaking for content creators to to make a real living off of YouTube, which I never really thought was a like, like if, if you got a second income and that's like, oh, that's just like my little piece of the pie. Well you you got a good job. A lot of people don't. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, yeah, but it's the the sense of security isn't there with a YouTube career. It's just not realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it could change yeah. at any time. It could change on the drop of a hat and we're seeing that now. So, I, I don't know. I, I think a lot of the, the big creators, at least one of them, needs to put their foot down and, and go to someplace like VidMe. And it would help VidMe out. I mean, the more, the more bigger creators that they get um, and the more people that go to VidMe and start watching VidMe over YouTube, YouTube will be forced to change. It's no different from the, the action figure uh, uh, topics we're talking about now. You don't buy it, it changes. Change. That's the problem. Yeah, I wish I, I want it to, but I don't think it's gonna happen. You don't think people so? People are too set. they're too set. You know, like they do. There's people who don't get their news. They don't leave YouTube for anything. Once they get on there, they get their news. They get their entertainment. They probably leave to go to Netflix, and that's it. You know? <laughs> like, but they can't get on on YouTube. They get on Netflix, and then they come right back to YouTube. Yeah. So you know, going to a whole new platform. I mean, it's going to take a lot. YouTube's really going to have to suck and, and, and you know, kind of shun people for that to happen. And I, I don't well, know I mean, if that's it, it is. I mean, they, they took Chapman Films' page down for no reason. I remember. That's bullshit. I, remember. I mean, they, they put it back up after he appealed it. But it's like they're yeah. just randomly taking down people's pages for no reason. I'm waiting for the yep. day they take mine down. I'll fucking start screaming at someone. <laughs> <laughs> like, What? <laughs> you haven't seen me angry. Oh my god! Like, I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, I um, I don't know. I hope they don't. I hope they get their shit together because that's annoying. These it channels is. take a lot of work for very little, you know, yes. around and, and and props. So it would suck to lose your whole channel because they fucked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I put hours into my reviews. Um. You know what I mean? Like it's not, and I just do it for fun. But I mean, I could see if I were trying to make a living off this. Like some people put, like Angry Joe is a perfect example. Angry Joe puts like sixty hours in to his angry reviews. Like he has to buy yeah, costumes, he has to buy um, a ton of product, he has to play the game. He, has well, he to also has like a couple million, several million subscribers, so he's gonna have to do more. You know? Yeah, he does, but. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that's understandable, but, like, that's there's a lot of work that goes into these videos that yeah, people don't realize because right. they're just like, well, he just gets paid to play video games all day. Who fucking <laughs> wish I could do that. Yeah, but you don't understand the man's schedule because you you're not him. You don't, yeah, there's more to it. Yeah, There's more to it than just that. I mean, he's got family and shit. Like, people get mad at him because he doesn't upload a video when they want him to. Like, what the yeah. fuck is wrong with you? You know how it is, man. It's it's entitled. Just because you don't have a life, he's not allowed to either? Shit. When I used to be part of the G.I. Joe community on Facebook, like the actual page, it's called the G.I. Joe community, mm -hmm. They, um, I was told, because I, I posted, uh, I would critique some of the stuff that people would put up, you know, because a lot of people would just take these pictures with their camera, I mean, with their phone, you know, and it'd be like, you didn't even try to stage anything, no lighting, no nothing. 
it's just snake eyes. And everybody's like, oh, it's awesome, it's awesome, it's awesome. And I'm like, actually, you need to do A, B, C, and D, and then it would really be awesome. It really fix this, you know, light it so we can see what's going on, um, crop the picture in a way that we don't see information that we don't need to see in the background. Um, you know, like if I was going to use like this image as a thumbnail, I'd be like up here so you don't see this box <laughs> trap for my, my, my short. You know, I would crop it like somewhere over here so you don't see that stuff. You know, the way I'm standing right now, I would cut it off here so you don't have to worry about what's going on over there. Yeah. They wouldn't even do that. I mean, you'd be seeing like, you know, your your, your wife's ass in the, in the, in the Sticking out, you know, bare ass. I don't want anyone star staring at my wife's ass. Oh, I, got <laughs> you know I, mean? I, got a, I got a funny story to tell you today. I'll, I'll tell you, I got to tell you. After, go ahead, finish. <laughs> but, but yeah, it just, it was bad. And like, I, someone was like, so who's this guy? I'm like, you see, when I joined the, the group, I joined the group early, you know, so it's not like I'm just some schmo that popped up today and decided to critique you. And my work is also on the page. So all you have to do is look at my work, go into the fucking, you know, photos, look at what I do and see that, you know, I actually have some kind of pedigree to my work. So the critique is not just me, you know, bitching at you to bitch. And this one dude told me, you don't post as often. We kind of wish you didn't have a life so you could post every day like we do. And I'm like, so if I have a life and I don't post every day, I'm irrelevant is what you're saying on this group because it's made for people <laughs> like us. And that's essentially what they got. To. So it's like, that's the internet logic, you know, you got to no have no logic. life. You got yeah, to have no sense. logic to have internet logic, right? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so funny story. Sense. This is, this is completely off topic. Uh -huh. uh, but today I was waiting I took off. I took off work today, and I was like, "Yeah, I just wasn't in the mood. It's fucking raining out. I feel like working in the rain, like yeah. raining, like like fucking pouring all day, like yeah. annoying." So I was like, Screw it. "I'm staying the hell home." I took a sick day, and um, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for the mail because I knew I had a, a package from Big Boy Collectibles coming in, um, and. <laughs> My, my wife is like, hey, I got a ow, my my tush hurts, and she's like, will you take a look? And there was like a bruise, and like just like because we have a curtain that covers the there's a like three front windows in the front of our house, and there's <laughs> a uh, like one curtain right here, and the dog always kind of peeks open to see yeah, who's there. Yeah, the same thing. And he, he he so he goes like this, and he's like looking around, he's making sure everything's okay, and then he'll put his head back and then the curtain will shut. <laughs> so just as I'm like, well, let me take a look at it, see if it's bruised. So she pulls her pants down, her asses out. And I'm looking and I'm just like, yeah, I think you get a bruise right here. And as I turn, Don't tell me the, mailman. the mailman, of course, he's looking at the window right at the right time. He's about to put down the package. <laughs> and the dog opens up the curtain to look to see who's there. And then my wife's ass is out. Jeez. And I just wow, she's gonna love that you told this story I, on, on, I, on live television. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I smacked her on the rear end, and the guy started laughing, and he ran to the next house <laughs> laughing. <laughs> wow! I'm like, hey, hun, you know how I tip the mailman once a year? I don't think I need to tip him after that. <laughs> <laughs> that is messed up. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> He got an eye full. That <laughs> <laughs> was fucking hilarious. Yes. It was like the perfect timing. Uh, not so much for her. Bad timing for her, but perfect I timing for, for the, the hilarity of that story. <laughs> oh, he just saw his face. He was like... <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen every day. <laughs> what the fuck? Definitely don't happen every day. Oh. Wow. Oh, so funny. So funny. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Well, man, I'm gonna jump off too. Yeah, um, I was I just gonna. Work. I was gonna end it. Yeah, I gotta work too. So we both work the same shift. Yeah, I hate it. I fucking hate the shift. I like not having to wake up early though. Fuck that. Yeah, shit. that's the best I hate part. That shit. But it's like your day feels weird. I mean, I got it down to where it goes by quick, but 
leaving in the middle of the day and coming back and everybody's knocked out. Exactly. And you're like, oh, well, I guess I'll uh, go play with my toys now. I'll see you later. <laughs> go to bed yeah, at exactly. four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well th- thanks for uh, thanks for joining us, dude. I, I was I was hoping that you would be able to jump on. I, I was I was like, he probably went to sleep. It's probably exhausted. <laughs> yeah, my bad that it took so long. Oh, it's but, all uh, good. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for joining me. And um, if Jose, you're still watching, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure having you on. We got to have you on again. And yeah, um, because awesome. yeah, we got even more to talk about. There's there's plenty to talk about. Um, Definitely go check out Strident's YouTube channel. Check out his Patreon. If you haven't subbed to his Patreon, go be a subscriber, please. <laughs> because he's got great content. He's always pushing out great content. His reviews are fa- fantastic. Some of the best on YouTube. Um, I, I would put it up there with with. with I'll try. No, <laughs> seriously. And I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm not trying to just, like, fucking jerk you off here. Um <laughs> Like, seriously, like, you have really good reviews, and you have a strong following. People really do like your channel a lot, and they're, they're adamant. And I'm, I'm just – I'm glad to be uh, – I'm glad that we have a good friendship. I'm, I'm glad yeah, yeah. that we're friends. And, um, so definitely go check that out. Um, check him out, and check out bigboycollectibles.com. And, uh, you know, check me out if you want to. Oh, to. <laughs> they're, all right. they're here. They're uh, here. Yeah, they're here. Oh, yeah, they're here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> You're already here. Uh, yeah, but here. thank you to everyone who watched tonight. Uh, I appreciate it. And um, I think we had a couple of your subscribers over here. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, Lamar Newton over here. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's, he's a brand new subscriber. Yeah, what's up? Man? Yep. Uh, G.I. Joe fan pops in here and there on my channel. I wanted to note him. He's a really nice guy. He's yeah. got a good channel, too. Go take, definitely go check him out. He deserves more ch- uh, subs than he's got. Yeah. He's, a good, he's a really good guy. Um, uh, J.D., thank you for joining us. Um, Kyle, Scabcat was here. Uh, the oh. Human Mechanism, another channel. Go check out both those channels. Yeah. Awesome guys. Awesome guys. Yeah, I gotta keep um, thanking him for showing us the freaking uh, Thunderwing, man. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. If it worked for you, good sir. Yeah, I'd still be in the dark. Yep. <laughs> so thank you to all of you. Um, also, thank you to E Money for because he was enjoying the discussion as well. So thank cool. you to everyone. If you even if you just lurked, thank you for lurking. And um, <laughs> I'm sure we'll be back. We'll be back with another podcast. And uh, I got a couple of reviews. I'm gonna upload too. Um, I'm going to upload my first one to VidMe. So if you guys want to check that out, go to VidMe. And uh, I don't know if – are you going to be on VidMe? Are you yeah. Gonna do it? I'm actually – I've been working on that for a while. Nice. So I've just been slowly – you know, I want to move a whole bunch of stuff, but I've been real slow to move on there because I don't feel like – it doesn't feel like the, the, the people here are going to move there, but just to have a backup would be yeah. dope, you know? I mean, fuck it. I mean, just keep uploading and people, you'll get new people too. Exactly. And then you could have new people go to your YouTube, cha- YouTube channel too. So That's true. You'll, Very you'll true. Get, we'll, we'll gain new crowds and we'll bring, we'll have our, our same, our, our, our loyals with us too. So, yeah. Um, so, but that's pretty much it for us. Uh, uh, you guys have a good night. Strident, thank you so much for joining me, buddy. You're awesome. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, man. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the flip side.